I've called the meeting to order and any additions or changes to the agenda and administrative items. Okay, we have the minutes of September 11th in our folder for today. Um, has everybody had a chance to review them? And I did send just a little paragraph when I was updating on my section of road things that got a little Lost in translation. Lost in translation. Okay. So I had uh, recrafted that, just clarifying that uh, I'm having the Brookfield go out to look for a, do a site visit for a permanent generator. They have a portable generator. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I saw that. Yeah, and yeah. clarity around the uh, site visit for Tyler. So. Yes, and, and I just, I, so I, I sent it to you. Yeah, do either one of you have that text that Ann sent? If you could just read it, and if they approve it, I'll input it into the approved minutes uh, tonight. Oh, okay, I sent it as a blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I took out, uh, Anton reported the town of a dedicated generator, reported the site was being assessed on 10, 13, 10 17, 23. Uh, and Tooler reported the state requested the town reduce the number of segments for road work in their MRPD grant to between six to eight. All road segments will need to be reassessed in MRGP RBIS app by April 2024. And made a motion to extend the $200 per month stipend for flood response as emergency road crew coordinator to Tyler Stecker on a month by month basis. He requested it be until such time as the FEMA flood recovery work is completed. Is that clear? I didn't hear anything about the generator. What is it's the first line? She oh, okay. It's going to be assessed on October seventh. Dedicated generator, and it will be assessed on ten twenty three, ten seventeen. It's when they're coming out to look at it. And okay. Have, you know, whatever. Cost analysis. Okay, and everybody's clear on what that replaces. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes with those changes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And now, um, we do not have board orders. They are here and they're moving around. Oh, okay. All right. And we are, uh, let's see, there are some grand list changes. So let's see, we're going to. How do, what do we do with this, Barbara? Is there a place for us to sign? These are yes, changes. There's page two. If you will each sign it. And um, when I talked to the listers this morning, they asked if they needed to be here. And I hope it's okay. I told them that I felt like this was just a pro forma task that you guys needed to sign off on it, and they didn't really need to be here to defend it. So I think that's okay. If that's not okay, I'll take responsibility for it. Um, I mean, I guess I would like to know sort of what, you know, one of them is like less than half. So, I mean, I am curious, but I don't want to hold it up or anything. So Okay, so um, we could either try to get John on the phone right now, if you would like for us to, or, or if you guys want to hold off, we can hold off or you can sign it and I can ask John to follow up with an email to you guys explaining the changes. Um, does anybody have an opinion? Should we just, what is it exactly? these are, um, air, here, let's pass it off. It's errors and omissions. And so some of the property values, uh, are changing um, from the, um, from what was on their tax bills. And one of them is just a really big difference. So I'm, I, it, it kind of feels like it should have a, an explanation. There was one that they brought to us a couple weeks ago. This is not any of them. These are all new ones. Yeah, and that one was pretty crystal clear. Right, right. right. exactly. Not a house Can anymore. Can try to get John on the phone for you? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Anne, what do you want to say? Well, Gabrielle, well, that's the one that is Elliot, or Jacob Elliot, that's changing from 255,000 to 56. No, it's a difference. Sorry, three hundred eleven thousand to two fifty five. Is that the one you're concerned about? No, uh, there's another one that is. Um, it's a difference. Oh, Mark, Mary yeah. Fulman. Yeah. Do you yeah, know anything about eighty-four thousand? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, the only information we have is it's corrected data, but we don't right. know what that is. 
Well, I mean, like, what would you, would you have just signed them or, or should we just get a little explanation <laughs> and then hold it off for two weeks? Like what, is there a harm in holding it off for two weeks? I don't, I don't know. You want to look at it. All right. I'll just, we'll, I think we'll just <laughs> sign them and then, uh, I, I, but I would like, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Change the land so that like, one parcel is bigger than one parcel. You know what I mean? It's like one gauge and one loss. Awesome. Yeah. But it is a big I can try again in half an yeah. hour or something. Right. Yeah, okay. Why don't we take this up later? I'm yeah. sure it's fine if we right. just put them off to the next meeting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that one. And um, let's see. Now we've got public comment. Are there folks here for, yes? I, I just need two minutes. Okay. Good. Um, I gotta say, um, Callus is looking really good, and we're really fortunate in the professionals that we have. Um, we need a few more, but um, we've had. Uh, we're fortunate to have Tegan and Barbara in the office, and the guys running the trucks and saving us from the flood. We've done an amazing job recovering from that flood. It's it's incredible. I've been walking around today looking at the looking at the some of the worst spots. <laughs> and you can't tell. Yeah, it's Moscow cool. Woods Road is quite quite People astonishing. Yeah. Um, but a big the big thing is that volunteerism is alive and well in Calus. <laughs> and you five are first among equals and are setting the rest of us a very good example. Um, I, it really just feels better somehow in Dallas. Um, and look at the look at the fall foliage flyer. Thank you, Jamie. Um, we you know we have uh, Memorial Hall is just amazing. Those that volunteer group has just done it's incredible. It was there last week and it's you wouldn't believe it. It's, it, it there's going to be a dance upstairs with the town hall group, all volunteers. Up here? Yeah. 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 The East Gala store, which has been a tremendous volunteer effort over years and years, is, mm -hmm. is going to be open and just for us to get a look at it. <coughs> the Trails Committee is going to have, mm -hmm. a, have a, a walk together with the Conservation Commission. And on and on and on and on. And I'm glad and proud to be a citizen of the Callis. It's a great place to be. Thank you for the good things you're doing. Thank well you. Said. Thank you. Good comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, John. I have, it might not be the right venue for this, but is there any way we can entertain an idea about residents along Route 14 having a tax reduction? due to the traffic that we face, and especially the trash trucks starting at 3 o'clock. Um, it's not the same as the rest of Calus. Like, it's fast, and it's very noisy. And I thought someplace that maybe Hardwick has a reduction in rates for well, A reduction to their municipal tax rates? I've heard that, yes. And it's due to the trash trucks constantly coming through. And like a lot of areas, the trash trucks, that's our main major route, they will reduce the property value a little bit. So it's mostly because of the trash trucks? Yeah, it's, all, it's really a truck traffic too during the mornings, but the trash trucks, I'm not blaming the haulers, but every once in a while stuff, I always pick up trash trucks. <coughs> <in the garden. coughs> it's just a noise, and it starts at 3. 3 a.m.? Yeah. Um, they're heading up to the only landfill in Vermont in Coventry. Right. So all the trash has to go to Coventry. So that's the way they go. 
Um, do you do you know of other towns besides Hardwick that have it? No, I'm just I just heard of Hardwick. Um, I would like to ask the state if they've ever been asked by a coalition of Route 14 dwellers yeah. to, I'm not sure I'm going to ask the state, but I don't know. Um, yeah, it just sounds a little daunting, but um, I guess we should take a look at, and I'm sorry, I, I should know this, but do you, do you live on Route 14? Yes. Okay. What's that? And the garage. Um, of course, we can't reduce it because of the truck. Yeah. <laughs> they might get hit out there by a trash truck. They keep it up. It seems like the first step would be to find out if Hardwick actually does and get a copy of the their yeah. policy on it, just to see what. Is possible. Yeah, well, and I know Montpelier reading some of the posts of people that were opining the tax assessments, they had ratings like traffic high, good neighborhood. So there's some up and down, and I don't know if that's how our assessments are either. I don't really know a lot about it, but because I've only heard of the opposite, like you get the, the view fee. Yeah, right. Know, no, I've seen, um, I've seen like point nines. <laughs> I mean, at least in East Montpelier, yeah. there used to be less than ones. Mm. Um, like Haggett Road was a less than one. I don't know why, hmm. but um, so is that is that how we would do such a thing? I don't know. I guess I don't know why they ask the listeners or what. You know, just just asking. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing it up. And the um, What they pay. I can't hear what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> it would be interesting to reach out to AOT as well and see if they would consider an increase in their compensation through the grants that they, because it is a, a, a major route that has a very specific kind of um, that has very specific impacts. And so even if it is a paved state route, it's a paved state route being used for a very specific uh, form of traffic, and maybe that should come with its own increased level of compensation. Is that something they do, based on the quality of a road? Uh, it's an impact, and it could probably be measured, so it's a question that could be asked. I don't know if they do it. Mm -hmm. There could be other there could be other communities that would be interested in, in that being a thing, I would imagine. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah. It might be who of you to have a consultation with the listers because they do property valuations. Yeah. <clears throat> what yeah. if they call that a special district? <laughs> <laughs> special district, Route <laughs> 14. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder well, how many homes is that? I, I think I could see it being a stickier conversation, I think, for there being an adjustment to the tax rate relative to traffic because mm -hmm. theoretically all roads are going to continue to have more traffic right. and they would want to step into that. But if you could if you could quantify an impact relative to a very specific type of traffic, you might be able to justify an increased degree of compensation for maintaining a quality of life and maintaining or offsetting those uh, those impacts. So if it's generating an increased level of trash, if it is generating an increased level of noise, like you could invest money into mitigation efforts. I would think that they would be more willing to pay for mitigation efforts than they would be to reducing tax burden. That's a Completely anecdotal assumption, but that was <coughs> my guess. And you're and you're saying a mitigation ex mitigation thing would be some sort of subsidy or something like that. Well, the tree fences, you know, things that would buffer the noise, 
either muffin the noise or establish a quiet zone or funding clean special cleanup activity if there are impacts relative to like trash coming out of the trucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not sure where to go next other than to just start exploring, for example, with Hardwick. So um, I think that's an action item. But Thank you. yeah. That's a okay. Interesting issue. Thanks for bringing it up, John. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Yep. I just did a speed test and look at the quality of Zoom we have. We're at uh, 250 down and 210 up. Woo! <laughs> Hot dog. At the same time. Thank you, everybody. So cool. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, that's great. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, we're on to purchase of road equipment. Uh, Toby is not here, but uh, John and Dana are here. Oh, just John. Dana's on the top. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? John came as a citizen, Dana. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you, Dana. Okay, um, first I can give you an update on our fleet, because Yes, that would be good. To clarify, and I must apologize before Dana starts, I have been completing Ford's report, and we have the international, which they were going to get the new Ford 550 or 600, which is the larger of the pickup trucks, and I was using that with the smaller Ford, which is also quite sad. But that is not the one that they were going to use. And we have this document to review while, well, um, yeah, okay. So this I just is wanted to, I was providing wrong information because I was confusing my fourth class. Got it. Okay. I was hoping Toby would be here to explain the spreadsheet part, but pretty self explanatory. Um, start off our target or more, of course, we know that's not in the service. Um, the wood chipper, both graders, the cat boater, the Volvo excavator, and the hydro sealer, they're all in service functioning properly. The trailer that the hydro seeder is on needs to get inspected. That's minor. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the new truck, um, the 10 wheel Western Star that we just got, uh, has to go back to the dealer as soon as we can get it in there. It's using oil. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be leaking. It's motor oil is disappearing two quarts a day. Wow. Hmm. So it's a substantial thing for them to look at. Um, the 2019 Western Star, um, that appears to be okay and in service. The 2017 Western Star 10-wheeler that we're talking about going off warranty this month, um, that's at Charlie Voice. It's got some oil leaking from the engine and a clutch. It's been there for three months, waiting for parts. Um, when I was up there two weeks ago, they said they thought the parts were in, and they did move it back inside, so we're hoping we'll have that back shortly. Can I just interrupt? So we don't have this document. It was an attachment on email from Toby to Anne. So at some point, if somebody could put that document in the folder, that would be great. I'm assuming it's the document that he is referring to. Do you see the document or the email? I see the email. There's not the attachment, though. Was this the attachment? Barbara, you made copies, didn't you? That's the 10-year yeah, yeah. I, I Yeah. I, I passed out the attachment. Oh, okay. I I was. I guess I was wondering if his... For your equipment, I've never seen right. Okay. Before. All right. Oh, he's just giving you a running list of the number of Mm-hmm. Yeah. Changes every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the 2014 10-wheel Western Star is at uh, um, Eastern Barry. Um, the check engine lights came on and they came up and told us that it appears to be a problem with the DEF pump pressure. And it also has a, I don't know what you call it, but it's an arm that goes from the frame to the rear axle. That keeps it in line when it goes up and down, and the bushing on the end of that has um, come apart, so it needs to be repaired or replaced. Clarification. That dump truck, is that the one that is the spare? That is. 
Okay. Yep. Um, the 2019 International CV. That's in New Hampshire at Fairfields. Fairfields is the people who outfit the plows in the body. Um, they're working on a cost estimate to make that ready for winter. Um, the 2016 Ford pickup is at McGee's Ford. Um, I have a cost estimate from them for... I provided it to everyone. Okay, so most of it... 900. Yep. Yeah, most of it is safety, some of it is an air cleaner, but most of it is like brakes and front axle work. And, um, it does not include the new windshield. It's a windshield because it's got a crack in it. And tires, doesn't include tires. Like, um, you mean snow tires or? Yeah, because we usually put like summer tires on and then winter tires. And you need new winter tires for those. Yeah, so I called the D4 today to kind of inquire about like getting a new pickup. And it doesn't include the bodywork, it's getting real rusty. And I asked them for a trade-in value towards a new pickup, either a gas or a diesel. And they said the trade-in value was $7,000 for that Ay, ay, ay. Um, I did get a cost estimate for, well, they have a, uh, a similar pickup, but it's upgraded to power windows in an XLT package. And that, um, is like $58,000 for a gasoline powered pickup and $65,000 for a diesel pickup. Um, one thing we're going to have to do is get guidance on what you want to do as far as do we want to repair it because it's still down there and they'd like to know by the end of the week. Is that for the, is that for the gas or? The That's gas, gas. yes. Gas. And we had had a conversation at the beginning of this year trying to phase that one out, right, to get every, we're everything talking about running on diesel. Right. right. Yes, but it isn't the one that they had because I got that confused with the international. So that's not the one that they had intended on trading in. The truck that was being brought last fall <coughs> was intended to replace the international. But this is your last... The last of the gas trucks, or would you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it appears to me that value of the repairs is more than what the trade in value is worth for the vehicle. So sometimes we have to maybe you'd like to fix it down there or get it off the lot. Because what size is that one? That's an F two fifty. If we repaired it, would we not replace it in 2025? I don't know how it passes inspection now with the rest on the body. It's prior management, you know, if there was, they bumped into something or there's damage to the body that was never fixed and should have been um, prior to this current group, maintenance was up, was not always as, you know, these guys are pretty religious about it, but that was in the culture prior. So, um, yeah, and I know Sandra has, and I don't know if that's something that they would use for that, like the five year lease to own for something relatively small, like a truck. But I mean, at this point, they don't have either pickup truck um, yeah, so it's, it's not a great place to be in. But. Dana also checked into an electric pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And yes. they're not a bit, they're only 150, it's going to be too small to truck. They yeah. Can the and stuff. Yeah. Um. Um, I think one in ten. Rowan, and this is very new, so I apologize, Dan, I don't you to feel like it jumped out of nowhere, but last week, Tegan had sent out an email that there is funding for certain technologies in um, equipment. 
up to 30%, they'll pay. I saw Keith Cuban at the emergency management conference, and he was saying that municipalities haven't been taking advantage of it at all. He who? Um, he from the Central Vermont region. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Cuban. Yeah. So he said he would be willing to come and meet with you all um, to kind of suss out if there's trucks, you know, that are in the type that you want to get that also qualify for this extra 40%, which is a lot on a $20,000 or $200,000 vehicle. So, um, what's the name of that program? He gets it out the email. It's some long, complicated federal something, but it's to use improved technology. So, it's not just about like electric vehicles, which with the electricity not always working, they're probably not a great plan, but just improved. <laughs> Um, functioning, different, I think some of the equipment we have now actually meets the qualifications and probably could, you know, if we have a similar something that we bought, we qualify like your truck that you have right now, that's having issues, but that one has a lot of impact on all of them, isn't it? Clean. Clean certified. What certified? Just like clean diesel certified. Oh, okay. So I'll go find the email again from TV and I had seen it and was like, blah. And then Keith told me more about it and I was like, oh, that's something you should probably Okay. Uh, so let's see. This. Can I just interrupt one second? Yep. Um, my computer somehow just <laughs> shut down and uh, we seem to off, be off Zoom, but I will try and get it back up as soon as I can. Okay, I, no I think we're going to continue yeah. because yeah, yeah. we're just, yeah. yeah. So um, it says Toby will present options for ordering a truck now for delivery. Okay. Delivery in FY25. We will discuss options for replacing some of the other equipment. So um, do you have options for ordering a truck now or are we going to wait until we're going to do this Keith Cubbin thing first? I mean, I think that. We should get Keith in quickly. I know that, I don't know how you, but I think most of the guys are, with the Western Star aren't, John's brand new truck came and has had issues. That's the one that's burning oil at two quarts a day, and it's brand spanking new. We knew about it after the flood. Um, and there's been issues with the air brakes. So I know they had wanted to look at some other models, and perhaps Keith will have like a, a ready list of things, these are what other people are getting, which would make it easier for us because it's so much stuff to sit through. Did you have a chance, did you, were you checking out different models of dump trucks and excavators? Because those were the things, the large items. Recording in progress. Um, I did not. Um, I talked to. I know it was a lot at the last minute. Right, I talked to Toby, and he mostly was hoping that we could get approval to replace what at the time was the 2017 10-wheeler. Um, uh, Peters? Yes. Okay. And we talked about perhaps doing the 2014 and keeping the 17 as the spare because it's getting some extensive work done on it now with yeah. clutches and things. And, and that, so the 2017 is having comprehensive work on the clutch and engine, so it we're putting it in work that's going to make it last longer, so it feels maybe not, I think, is that where you guys were at? And then maybe right. um, the green truck that's currently at Boot Seas with the two engine lights on is the one. Okay. That's the, the 14, which is the oldest one. And um, it's getting pretty rusty in the back, so we're going to have to do something with the back body if it's starting to crack because it's weakened. So it, to me, it would make more sense to keep the 17 as the spare and take the spare of the 14 and trade that in. Mm -hmm. And Toby thought the value of that was probably 50000 mm -hmm. towards a trade. So he was hoping that we could get approval to replace the 17 or the 14 truck okay. tonight. And then I thought he was asking for two. Is that right? So and an excavator. No, no, the, no, the, no, the, uh, the 2019 CB, yeah. and it appeared that the last select board may have approved. But that's the international. Yeah, international. That's the one that they were going to try to get a um, 
for F604. Yeah. yeah. Um, I talked to Toby about that, and we had quite the conversation back and forth about maybe going with a either a Freightliner or an International six-wheel dump truck because it's a heavier duty truck and we could put our chloride tank in it and use that as um, a way to put our chloride on because at the present time we don't we'd have to put it in a 10 wheeler because our six wheeler just got traded so we don't have a six wheeler anymore um, he estimated from talking to the dealers that if we went with an international it probably would cost 50,000 more than the Ford and if we went with a Freightliner, it might be 80000 more, but we'd have to get all the specifics down. Um, so I'm not sure if it, we still have the approval to replace that truck or what we have to do to do that as well. Because it was kind of like they ordered the chassis through somebody and it disappeared in the transition. So hmm. we can't find where it is coming in. And the Fords are hard to get. I wish learned that. But the, that uh, Ford? the Ford 600 chassis that we looked at different places and somebody yeah. said, well, it's been ordered and canceled. And then somebody else said, well, Ford's not sending them out right now. And they were going to downsize it to a 550. And I want to say it was still, but then people, I would have to back and look at my notes. Mm -hmm. But I know there was somebody who had one, but the mm -hmm. one who had it, I canceled it in October. And we go to the bigger truck. It'll be a low profile too. Yeah. Um, now, um, I think the bigger truck is going to have to be a six wheeler in order to hold the weight of the tank, which gives you more capacity to sand the roads and haul. <coughs> but it's, it is um, a six wheeler. It'll be truck. four wheel drive. It'll be four wheel drive, yeah. yes. I thought it was low profile. We were talking low profile, but I believe the gross vehicle weight is lower. Okay. In these chassis after we were talking. And the four wheel drive part means we can go from the shop the reason, to the road. Right. The reason it needs to be all wheel drive, like the F600, is we salt the roads with it. So if you have to go from our shop down to Lightning Ridge and then out to County Road, you don't really want to have chains on in this vehicle with the all wheel drive. Well, the one that we have now seems to fit that. We've only put chains on when it rained and it got real icy, so. But that's another option to look at. Would it be possible, Dana, to, within like the next two weeks, if we can get Keith over to help educate us about that pot of money, and maybe actually come with, like this is the truck we want to replace this truck with, and. This is the like figure, whatever. And like a pretty much like a figure because it's, I can't speak for everyone else. I've been trying to learn this for months and it's really hard for me to wrap my head around. So, um, but that might help because it's, yeah, like. So I should very talk, hard. talk with Toby. Is well, no, talk with Toby, but let's bring Keith in. I'm not sure and, who Keith Okay, is. so Keith works for Central Vermont Regional Planning Council. And oh, so when he gets all the information on the different pots of money, and there's this. Funding stream that can pay up to thirty percent of some of these vehicles for <coughs> technology. So, like John stumped to how to qualify for it, um, and municipalities haven't been tapping into it. Okay. Companies like Hutchins have been tapping into it. Yeah, municipalities. Okay. So, and he might actually know which trucks would qualify and narrow down, so it's less overwhelming for you all too in kind of identifying which trucks you want to put forth as let's trade out one of these. Uh -huh. So, so are you, did you say you're without a pickup truck? Our pickup truck is that Formula Ford, and they'd like to know if we want to spend... The 7000 to repair it, and yes. it's worth a trade-in value of 7000 right. And it'll cost approximately 61000 to replace it, and it's slated to be replaced in 2025. So, um, and that is the one that you think is a good good candidate for this funding stream? I know any of them would be a good candidate. I think the, the smaller Ford that I've been completing with the other vehicle is one that we're really going to have to 
probably get now. I mean, it's or in the near future. It is. They have no. They don't have the medium sized pickup. This, this is the smaller pickup that they used to run around and do the cones and do the site visits and all the things. And um, when you say the smaller, you are talking about this 2016 this Ford. Yeah. Okay. The F250 because the to put 7,000 in it, but more. It's going to be with the tires. What 8,000? I'm not sure. Right. I don't know. Price tires, but it, it needs but it's going to go right back. I mean, there's inspection. there's yep. there's nothing we can do to it to make it be well. Peter's truck, the 2017 that Toby had put forth to replace, they're putting in good quality work on major systems that should keep us do for quite a while. Do we know roughly if we were to order the new truck as a replacement for this one? Do we know roughly how long it would take to come? Would that mean we're without a truck for a year and so we want to fix this one anyway to get us through? <coughs> or As far as the pickup? Yeah. Um, if we went with a gas pickup, they have one there. They could get us a diesel pickup. I don't know what the time frame is, but I'm sure they'd just go to a different dealer. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a. I don't think it'd be very long. Okay. And you all, did you you wanted to do diesel because you have diesel on site, so it's. That's easier. what we had talked about. It's part so of the day after flood, gathering yeah. gas cans and sending people all the way to Danville to get gas for the truck. Um, okay, and, and I'm sorry if this is dense, but you said something about it, that it'd be good to have a six-wheel truck to have the chloride. Right. And so would that be instead of replacing the Ford in short order? The Ford, um, okay, let me back up. The, right now we have an international CV, which we use to salt. And Is salt. that on here? Is that it's on the uh, capital plan? Because I don't see anything that says international CV. That's the uh, well, 2000. The okay, that's very, that's very well, it's an international harvester. CV is the model. Oh, an international so, harvester. Yeah, so that's the truck that's all wheel drive that we salt with and plow the county road. Which one is it on the capital plan, though? It's not listed. It's not listed, it's not listed. It's not listed at all? Okay. That's the confusion. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm not stupid. No. And is it under heavy equipment or? No, it's no, like it's a truck. Truck. no but should it be? Is that's it? That's the six wheeler. Yeah. This what year is that? I believe it's a 19, 2019. Wow, that's only four years old. It's a 2019 and it's only worth $9,000, no, $7,000? That's the F250. Uh, uh, so I think the reason is probably not on here. Uh, I think uh, what they put on sense, here. But they put the 2025 for F600. That was the one that, as, that would be replaced. As a replacement. Uh, <laughs> I think he was anticipating that it was already scheduled to be. Be replaced. Yeah. from the old selector. Yeah, a year or more yeah. ago. Correct. But it's not well documented. But it seems right. it seems to me that like that one has the most. Uh, well, one. That, I'm, I'm guessing that Keith probably has the most input on stuff like that. And then also there's some, still some configuration. If the one that was approved originally was was now let go and we're back into configuration mode of picking a model and a chassis, there's still, and then there's delivery time and that sort of thing. And that one is probably tabled for the moment until we can kind of get a better idea of where things stand. So it would seem to me that it would make the most sense to short term table the approval of that one until we can figure out the configuration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, get a good number on it, see if we can't get decent money for it, but then provide authorization to go out and purchase a $61,000 pickup to replace the one that is probably not worth putting seven grand into. So there's a little bit of a temporary give and take there, knowing that 
there's a lot to still be sorted out on the six wheeler. I think it makes a lot of sense to be pursuing one uh, at you know a smaller smaller price point than the ten wheelers, which we seem to have in abundance. But uh, and need to kind of yeah, though not working, and we need to figure out what to do about those. But in the short term, we need to sort out getting a pickup truck for running around because it doesn't make sense to do any of the running around in ten wheelers that you guys also don't have. So, mm -hmm. if, if we're going to go that route and approve that tonight, maybe we can just condition it with somebody have a brief conversation with Keith. Yeah. And if it does qualify for this 30% uh, payment, or if there's a slightly different truck that would qualify for the 30%, you know, change gears a little bit that way. So I don't suppose the Ford dealer would be knowledgeable about this funding stream? Um, maybe, because it sounds like private companies have been tapping into it. So they might have knowledge about it. Um, yeah, we also heard that a lot of the dealers do not want to deal with municipalities because they get a discount that's easier for them to sell to private contractors. We got an apple to our dash trucks and lost it. I would think we'd go right to, right to Keith and ask them exactly what we can get for what particular models and where the incentives are and see if we can align ourselves yeah. with, those, with those incentives. Um, yeah. I'm asking right now. So I'm just wondering um, if we should have warned something more specific than what is on here, because um, it says Toby will present options for ordering a truck now for delivery in FY25. That's actually not what we're talking about. We're talking about something in shorter order. Right. Yeah, but so. The one that was warned was for the replacement of the 10 wheeler. Yeah. So, um, and then and then the other question I have about the the 2019 International Harvester is that um, that that's still under warranty, right? I don't believe so. It shouldn't it have a seven year warranty? Isn't that what we do? Seven year warranties. No, it wasn't. It just came back from the international dealer and wasn't covered. Okay. A lot of the extended warranty covers like the motor and the transmission and maybe some electronics and emissions but um, like the rear body and the plow equipment I don't believe that's under the extended warranty I'm not Toby would have to answer that but I believe I that's it. correct mm -hmm. because I asked him if this um, 17 would be under warranty for the clutch and he said he didn't think so he thought it was Major electronic components yeah. and emissions mm -hmm. and Such as wearable parts. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So is there a motion tonight that is within the con like because it, it, it's still a big purchase and we did we didn't really warn it or anything? And like I, I wonder if rather than pass a motion with a bunch of contingencies, if we should just do something in two weeks. Ann Winchester, do you have do you have thoughts? She's How, are you able to hear? Oh shh. No, she's there. I'm, she's here. I'm not able to hear all the conversation. I'm afraid, so I don't feel that I got enough information. Yeah. To have more thoughts. Okay. Um, when I talked to Toby, he was hoping we would authorize the pickup. Although uh, Dana, help me out. I thought you actually wanted a heavier truck than that pickup so that it would be more flexible. Um, we're confusing the two. Okay. Um, <laughs> the heavier truck was for the international CV. The pickup is a different issue that kind of came up after most of the conversation with Toby. Okay, so, so Toby was hoping we would get the 110, we'll authorize the 110 wheeler because yes. he feels it would take so long to get it and we can figure out how we're going to pay for it um, in, at, at, when we do the capital budget in early November and that we would authorize the pickup now. In fact, we can figure out how to pay for both when we do the capital budget in early November. 
Um, he, because we need to get back on schedule, as Ann pointed out, we kind of lost, we kind of lost the momentum. It, for a couple of years, we're probably going to have to put more money into equipment in order to get back on schedule. Um, so so we were, more, you know, re the replacement schedule. More specifically, and um, how out of line do you think it would be to approve the acquisition of the pickup truck that has come up in short term, even though it wasn't explicitly warned as part of this decision making, uh, and then put off the decision on the 10 wheeler um, that Toby hmm? is saying we should say which truck order now and then figure out how to pay for it later. I'm kind of wondering if we say we we, we didn't approve the purchase or acquisition of the 10 wheeler until we can figure out some more funding and configuration, uh, which we've been going over with Dana, and in the short term, yeah. approve the mm -hmm. the acquisition of a of a pickup truck, even though it wasn't explicitly warned. Quite like that. What is it? What is it that you would learn? I mean, don't we know we have to order a ten wheeler? And Toby sent us all those specs. Well, they were in your well folders. So there's there's just that there's been some input from uh, Keith Cuban. Uh, about uh, some potential like lines of subsidy that are available to municipalities for equipment acquisitions and that the 10 wheeler depending on how it's configured or what 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 model etc cetera, etc cetera, could be uh, it, it could be applicable you know. Okay, that's the piece I was missing. I see, and you're saying we could talk about that at the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. Well, that makes sense then, sure. And we can, if we're concerned about uh, voting tonight on something that wasn't properly warned, we can always ratify it in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so it does... It does talk about the 2016 truck is in need of 7,000 worth of repair. So, um, so let's see. So, how would the motion go if we wanted to approve the pickup truck um, and ask the road crew to meet with Keith Cubbin and um, explore what of the um, trucks and heavy equipment could be um, subject to this? incentive program or whatever it is, subsidy. Um, so I would make a motion um, approving the acquisition of a new pickup truck. One ton? We were looking at a three quarter ton? Three quarter. F-250? F-250. But if it's going to be a diesel, it's a little more than the 61. It's the under 65. Up to no more than 65 then. So the acquisition <coughs> of the three-quarter ton pickup fitted with a diesel motor, not to exceed $65,000. And to table all other acquisitions until the uh, Truck yeah, truck acquisitions um, until the road crew has an opportunity to meet with Keith Coven about equipment subsidies that are available to mun uh, municipalities relative to Dana's report on the current state of equipment. To meet with Central Market with the Commission to discuss additional planning. And to potentially inform the upfitting of a 10 wheeler dump truck. How's that? Everybody chewing on that? <laughs> anybody, anybody want to throw anything else in there? I think that's enough. Uh, no, so uh, there's a motion. Uh, Rose, would you mind reading that back? <laughs> I'm still typing. <laughs> uh, 
Just one thought about the 10-wheeler is he thought it wouldn't be delivered for over a year to 18 months, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't come out of the first year's budget. Just that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, and we do know that, but it would be great to get 30% covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Especially for sure. Have, like, oh yeah, for sure. If there's grants available, definitely. How big is the difference yeah. in capacity and like hauling capacity and chassis between like a four fifty, five fifty, and the six hundred? I would have to research that because Toby did the most of that and just gave me the figures of when yeah. I asked him. Um, so I don't have that answer. I think a six one F six hundred might be closer to maybe two tons. Hmm. And your like five fifties are not even not even a ton. Right. And a bucket of salt over that. Right. Okay, so we have a motion. Is there a second? <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Truck. <laughs> yeah, I to keep track of. about the grader to go on the town meeting ballot for a win um, to replace the John Deere grader. Um, he said with $350,000 for a replacement grader that we should maybe put on the March ballot. I don't know how that part of it works, but he asked me to present that as well. Um, Dana, I think we were gonna talk, we're gonna uh, devote an, a most of a meeting in early November, our first meeting in November to the highway budget. So I think we'll talk about that at that time. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make yeah. Sure, I presented it. So and the exclusive lease to own program that we're gonna run with Woodbury, right? For all of our used equipment. <laughs> Sorry, that's a cheeky joke. <laughs> um okay. So I think that's it for that one for now. Unless there's other stuff you want to report, Dana or John. All right, thank you. Um, curb cut applications, Andy Seaman and Sophia. Amy. Amy. Okay. And this one, I think, was accompanied by Ann Tulin. You wrote a note saying, was this the one that had, that there was a visit and everybody thought it was honky dory? Uh, no, so this is. Um this one is, was specked out. I don't know if we received info from Chase and Chase, but we had met with Chase and Chase a while ago. Um, yeah, this we is talked Chase about the configuration of it, and um, the crew was going to be putting a culvert above, like heading up towards Callis above the driveway because there is ledge below um, to ensure we water off the road. And then we had a little bit of a snafu with. Uh, some reason one of the contractors for CD was running fiber up the roadway, so they're fixing that. Um, because otherwise, we'd be cutting in high fiber all the time. So it's good, we can do it. I was very good to do that part of the day. Okay, so, um is there a motion to approve this, or for, I guess, what would the motion be for us to approve this curb cut, Seaman and Amy, and I'll pass it around to sign it. So do we need a motion for that, Ann? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we okay. Do. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. I'm Did signing no and passing around. No conditions. Well, or Is as. Is there a permit? As, okay. as proposed. As proposed. Approved. Because okay. in the folder of the stuff you sent me, there was just an email with an address. So I never saw the permit. There's, uh, there's a Chase and Chase supply. Plan, site plan. This one. Designating radius is right away with. 
That one is in the, the, the Chase and Chase document is mm -hmm. in the folder. Maybe someone can just send it to me. Not today, but we don't oh. Yeah, I don't know. I would not, okay. If we want to. A friendly amendment to the motion being that it uh, be constructed as proposed in the plan detailed by Chase and Chase. Yes, I submitted I, along yes. with. I'll take that as a friendly amendment. Okay. And I'm NBC and I'm happy to answer any questions. If they come up, I can send you the documents. Yeah. I just need to put it in the minutes, and I don't know anything except two people's names was the road. That's all I know. But when people might have a question about a curb cut, the first place they go to look is the minutes sure. if they don't go to the town office. So it, it's just nice to have a little bit more detail on that. That's all. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Is that one we all have to sign, or do we need to authorize Gabrielle to sign? There's five spaces. There's five signature okay. spots. We could change that in the future. Oh. Yeah. 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 Technically, before the friendly amendment, but that's okay. All right. So next up is the. Um, Stern, Collar Hill Road, Curb Cut. And um, so this one, um, and do you know about this one? Um, the crew went out again, they had talked to him previously, he had put in a temporary uh, smaller culvert that would not be, it's not, but he needed to be able to get equipment in and out, so they said you can do that for now. Mm -hmm. um, and then Toby went out and said it looked fine. And then the guys went back out again. And Mr. Stern said that, yeah, Toby said it was fine. And we, have, we looked at it. There's some shelter and drain the road off. We put a 15 inch culvert in, and it provides access to the back door. OK. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's no site problems, nothing like yeah. that. The description says the proposed cur curb cut to add a culvert to the existing and historical uses of the land and improve access to the rear of the buildings. The culvert is to minimize erosion and assist drainage. Okay, is there a motion to approve this curb cut application? I so moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. We are now ready to transition to the budget with we Sandra. Have Sandra. Okay. Hi Sandra. Sandra, you are muted. There I am. Hello. Hello. Hi. And now I need to start the video. Yeah, you need to. Uh, yeah. Start your video and then screen share after you start your video. I think if you're in the screen share. Here I can go. You. Okay, uh, let's see. I my video is supposed to be started. Can you you can't see me though? Can you? Oh, I think maybe your computer has one of those toggle switches on the top. You know about that? No. Nope. I... <laughs> if you look at the the top of your monitor on your laptop. Yeah. Um, right above the camera, there's a toggle switch. And it slides, it basically covers your camera with a little. No, it doesn't have one. It just has a, uh, it just has a camera. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Oh, mm. Hang on. It's an integrated camera, video settings. Let's see what the deal is. Uh, Thank you. Huh. This has always worked before, the, of course, right? The image that we're getting on our screen shows the picture of that toggle switch. And it's sometimes really hard to even see unless you run your finger along that part of the top center of the monitor. I, I see the camera. 
but it doesn't there doesn't seem to be a switch on that. So mm. gosh, I have used this before so many times. That's kind of crazy. Oh wait, what's that? No, nope, that's not. Anything. Hang on. Mm. Well, we all have copies of the document, so I, I think you can, um, you know, if you've already run your thumbs along the top mm -hmm. of the monitor, that's all you can really do. And um, let's just let's just begin the walkthrough. So that yeah, it, do you all have hard copies? I believe we do. Do we? Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. So. What you have here is the basic scaffolding of your budget worksheet. And you it's uh, broken into five columns. So you see what was budgeted in fiscal year 23 and what was actually spent in the first two columns, or I should say uh, in, in the uh, second and third column. And then you see what was budgeted for this year, FY24. And the column after that is what this select board will propose at town meeting as the budget for FY25. The last column is for notes. We started, uh, uh, Ann Winchester and Gabrielle have both worked on this uh, particular document with me. It started out as a flatline document, which simply means we copied over FY24 into FY25. You will see that there are several line items that are highlighted in yellow. Those line items have either been changed, revised, or there may be uh, some additional research or questions that need to be asked. Um, the salary ranges or suggestions were brought in by Anne and are a, a simply a starting point for your discussions. Um, there is one line item, at, well, let's see, I'll tell you what page, on page 12, the EMFD truck loan, uh, that was on the warning in, uh, early, uh, I believe it was in March, 2023, no loan had been taken. So the loan has been taken. The money is sitting in, an, in a town account. It's pooled uh, in our operating account. And that line item will get moved up into uh, long-term debt. And it is uh, $13,337 It would be the principal payment. And I think it's $3,800 and some um, will be the interest payment. That will be moved. I didn't have that information when I constructed this document. Otherwise, uh, you will be inviting your various committees, commissions, and department heads to come and see you. What I'll do with this document is break out um, spreadsheets and forward them to those uh, chairpersons, and they will have a chance. They'll see it just the same way, the budget, the uh, FY23, the actual budget, the FY24 budget, and what they would like to see in FY25, they'll have a spreadsheet to work with and to present to the board. The town office is already working up their sections of this budget to present to the board. That would be general office expenses, elections, the town report and uh, uh, salaries associated with that office, the town clerk and the assistant town clerk. This is a living document, what you have in your hands and what was um, emailed or what it was uh, uploaded into the Google file is a PDF. And um, what we'll do after every meeting 
is we will have the next version, this being your initial version. This is subject to change. Every line can change however you want it. There should be someone at your meeting to mark up your changes that you would like to see um, that came out of any particular meeting uh, together or with a commission or committee person and get them, uh, have Barbara bring that to the office and I will make the changes on the spreadsheet, cre create that new version and get it out to the board within a day or two of that meeting so you could see what the changes are. Uh, right now, uh, what, I, what I'd like you to do is go to the very last page and kindly notice that um, with the changes that are here, the highlighted lines, the budget is 2% over the FY24 budget. And that there are formulas now in the spreadsheet and that percentage will go up and down as you um, make changes uh, throughout the document. There are a few cells such as FICA, VMERS, um, that will need formulas based on the amount of wages that you decide upon. And we'll pop that in pretty much at the last, you know, toward the very end of uh, the budgeting process that they don't change, it won't change that very much. And, um, you, you will work through this line by line with, with yourselves and with your uh, commissions, committees, and department heads. So that is the intended purpose of this document. Does anyone have any questions or has anything popped out at anyone that they would like me to research? There are a couple of points here that we I need to research it um, and I'll have that for you at your next meeting or with this next version. Any questions? So I have a question. The two percent that is just a straight two percent increase in municipal taxes. That is a two percent increase in the budget only. The taxes are a, a formula that is also based on the grand list. So, if your grand list goes up and your budget goes up, you, your tax rate theoretically could remain the same, right? Because what you're raising is then divided by the grand list. If your grand list goes down and your budget didn't change at all, your tax rate theoretically, again, would go up because you would um, have a smaller number being divided into the expenses. Same thing with projected income, although in a municipal setting, uh, projected income really doesn't change very much from year to year. It did uh, during COVID years, the state aid to highways was sweetened by the state to help towns get through that. But uh, at this point, we're, we're seeing fairly consistent and stable projected income. So your tax rate is a function of grand list ex and expenses minus proposed in revenue. And this is just telling you what your budget increase or decrease over the prior year will be. Uh, I have a little bit more, I guess, of an existential question. Uh, <laughs> and, or just a, a, a presentation question. Uh, I wonder if there had been any dialogue in previous years um, during your tenure about including maybe not comprehensively uh, increases in the budget, like a percentage uh, column, you know, for the town when when the budget is going out for or being prepared for the warning. Um, you know, I think the in my brief experience, it seems like people kind of get a little bit of sticker shock, but 
what they're missing, I think, is some broader context. Um, and in the last two years, there have been some pretty significant inflationary forces that um, affect the budget in a way that I don't think everybody really thinks about. So, you know, I think if you were to present a proposed budget that, you know, by in some way, if we get to the end of this process and we're still passing along a 2% increase in the budget relative to the increase in costs that we've been seeing over the last two years, I would think that that would be a pretty significant win for the town and the people. <laughs> uh, at least for them to kind of realize that there hasn't been that direct impact uh, realized in, in the budget that's being proposed. So. I'm just wondering, that might be a formatting thing that we can revisit like as we refine the budget and start to see where things are, are landing, but I just, I was curious about that. Well, we can take a look at formatting this particular document. This document actually comprises about 10 pages of your town report. Right. Um, what you're suggesting, I think, is a great idea and might be better presented rather than visually. It might be a better narrative for the select board report. Sure. In terms of uh, helping, you know, a, gra a graphic. And this is more, this is a graphic of a kind. Graphics are, are sometimes hard to read or really to get a feel for what they're trying to tell you. I think uh, narrative and maybe plus a graphic would drive home your point. The tricky thing with that again is um, there is a direct relationship with the grand list and proposed revenue sources. So, you know, you can sharpen your pencils hard on a budget and still see an increase in the tax rate. This format, by the way, follows uh, how your town warning is, has been set up in the past and you would decide that for yourselves. The very end, beginning at page 11, we see Warren Special Articles and Warren Special Articles uh, the Social Service Appropriation, Kellogg Hubbard Library, Fire and Ambulance in particular, the Cemetery Appropriation, can uh, teeter-totter the best laid budget that you can put together. They can be voted up because they're by article, right? They could be voted up, they could be voted down. Uh, some of these things are put together Kellogg Hubbard Library, for instance, and the fire departments, they have their own way of figuring out how much money they're going to ask for from each town. And you don't really have any control over that. And again, that's the kind of thing that at town meeting, you kind of <laughs> bite your nails a little bit to see where, where really is all this going to go. So, um, you know, the, this is uh, right, we can and I have put a percentage formula at uh, on page 11, that blue uh, highlighted area doesn't have a formula in the notes column yet, but that's the column that tells you what select boards have done uh, in FY24 and what you're proposing to be done in FY25. The rest of this spreadsheet just real, uh, it, you know, we really don't know what, what's going to come at the town, but I can add a formula right there and that will give you some guidance, I think, about um, what you, what has been done and what compared with what you're working on right now. We definitely can do that. We'll do that in the next version. Rose? Yeah. I had a comment. Um, in the town report, and it confirmed from my years on the select board too, um, Sandra gave a wonderful explanation about what happens. Um, and in this last, um, Select board report, it talked about 
if all the budget items were approved at town meeting day, it would be a 5.7% increase. So usually past select boards have come up with their proposed budget, compared it to um, what the cost of living increase or consumer price index. So our town, if everything was approved, it was 5.7. And the consumer price index in our region was of over 6% in 2022. So we tried to link it to that. So that's the first step is that you kind of like plug in all these want numbers and then usually the select board goes back and realizes we can't increase the town's budget, you know, that much would be too hard to hit. But that's the hard part is to where you're gonna cut some numbers um, to kind of rein it in a little bit. But um, yeah, that's usually what the process has always been. And Jordan, mm -hmm. that's that narrative that I was talking about. Prior select boards have used pie charts, uh, narrative to uh, elucidate what what has happened and what is happening. One thing you may want to consider in your conversations is selecting a uh, cost of living adjustment indicator. There are many. There's, you know, the national or federal cost of living adjustment. There are regional cost of living adjustments. And uh, they do change and shift over time. And it might, uh, it, I suggest that perhaps you do decide at some point what cost of living adjustment factor you think is most pertinent to uh, the town of Callis, and that's the one that you're going to key off of and uh, work with to determine, you know, how how to construct this budget and make it meaningful. I have a question about a, a cola and the the new union contract. Is um, are does the contract specify a cola? You know, so, I, haven't, I haven't read that contract fully, and it strikes me that it may not specify a yeah, cola. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan and Ann and Jamie just confirmed that it does not. And what, you know, eh, that's a, well, that doesn't have to be, uh, that's going to have to be discussed, I suppose, at some point in time, unless it's in an addendum somewhere. And in here, it's at 5.9% mm -hmm. for yep. effective July 1st of 2022. Mm -hmm. 5.9 COLA. Yeah, although that is, that, okay, so that would have been reflected in the FY24 budget, but it was actually instituted in FY23. Um, sorry, Sandra, can you clarify whether or not uh, what you're, you're saying is that we should settle on one of the colas uh, that's most pertinent to Calus for comparison's sake or for working into uh, our calculus on on budget, well, individual budget items? Well, I think that's the conversation you will have between yourselves I, I, um, if, if you want to bring home to your constituents, how the budget increases, I mean, there's going to be increases. It, it, there just are, your medical insurance is going to increase. You're going to have a larger salary base, uh, just to name two, two things. So your FIC is going up, your VEMAs are going up by some amount, um, so if when you're trying to say, look, we're still under the COLA here in our region or whatever COLA you select, that I think is that I think is the meaningful conversation in your narrative. But, you know, that that's your um, conversation and decision. One thing you may be aware of, um, and I am, I don't feel that I'm speaking out of turn because I have permission. Uh, Tegan did say she would be 
interested only in a cost of living adjustment for FY25, but of course we don't have a cost of living adjustment identified as to what exactly that would be. So um, things like that um, are going to be important to be, able, I think, to, um, to the integrity of the budget to be able to talk about what that COLA is to the folks whose salaries or hourly wages may uh, be affected by that. that but that's not a tonight discussion necessarily, but it, it could be a, a something that you keep in the back of your heads and think about and take a look at. It, it, I can tell you, it was a conversation and sometimes very heated in uh, prior boards when we're, they were looking at COLAs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you go back uh, in, uh, I think, two or three town meetings, the select board picked a COLA and said, you know, wages would not go up beyond that uh beyond that cola even if the cola itself changed by july 1 at the beginning of that next fiscal year so that that was another tactic that that was taken well yeah because it's a budget that the town has to approve so it so you couldn't you couldn't change it and like you couldn't, if we, after town meeting, you couldn't change the COLA for FY25. Yeah, you can. The select board runs the budget. It's your yeah. budget. It's your budget. You no, but I'm saying after the town votes for the budget. You can still you change, can change it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then we'll we'll our, <laughs> we can change it. What Barbara is pointing to is that while the number is what sets the tax rate in the formula with the grand list and projected revenues, the budget in and of itself is a guide. You have X amount of money to work with and you can then uh, use your guidance and best judgment to uh, work your budget lines. So if you, you know, wanted to hike up or reduce salaries that are in a budget line, that is definitely within your bailiwick on, with the understanding that you have X amount of dollars that have been approved for expenses. It, is that, that's what you were saying, right, Barbara? Thank you. You said it much better. Okay, um, and Winchester. Can I, um, yeah. Ask a question for Mary's statement. Are you open to that? Sure. Okay. Um, just, if, good night. Oh, Charlotte Passage. If you don't give a, um, an adequate COLA, it doesn't take many years before you are underpaying your staff, and then they get. Um, unhappy, as has happened in the past. So, mm -hmm. um, if you don't keep up, uh, you're not going to keep your staff. I yep. think we all learned that. <laughs> yep. So, uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, and did you want us to specifically talk about some of the salaries that you plugged in? You're muted. <laughs> nope, still muted. Salary. 
did, uh, did you guys work with uh, Sandra to do any calculations on uh, benefits and cost per hour? I think that Sandra is going to uh, meet with Toby to discuss the highway portions of that. And um, I think uh, Sandra has a heads up that the health insurance is going up 13%. But I, but Sandra, I, I, I think I remember that you have not done a deep dive on the existing positions as far as um, extrapolating out the um, benefits yet, right? That is correct. Uh, right now, we haven't heard from Toby, so that that piece, I, I will, I, I need to take a step behind and let. Uh, Toby present his budget. He does have the spreadsheet and I, he's been working on it. We, Anne and I worked on the premise that there would be four full time in FY25. I think the highway crew sees the need of that. And also we uh, added a foreman position in FY25. Now, how that shakes loose when Toby uh, takes a look at this. You'll you'll find out. He will present his ideas to you. I, I I'm not sure. I don't recall when he is um, invited to meet with the board. But that is uh, he uh, needs overtime hours from me that we can do an average of overtime hours. As, as you can see in those cells, we just took straight time at 40 hours a week and uh, the plus overtime is yet to be determined. We're, we, we need to run some payroll reports to pull that information so Toby can make a meaningful stab at that number. I have another uh, general kind of question. This is a little bit for the select board as well as you, Sandra, which is, um, is there a snowball's chance that there's any single line in this that can be reduced? It, is it all just destined to be increased? Uh, I, I say this with the deepest respect. I mean, you can reduce uh, contributions to reserve funds. You can reduce contributions to various commissions. Um, you can uh, basic. I mean, there are places where you can reduce your budget, but you want to reduce your budget based on, you know, meaningful historical data. And uh, one thing uh, I believe that Tegan is going to present that uh, we're going to see an increase in uh, communications that would be internet and phone with the advent of CD fiber because we're, it appears at this time, and that's my best understanding at this time, that we will need to maintain certain hard lines through consolidated communications in order to um, maintain the security systems. And then there's the additional cost of CV fiber. So uh, I believe that that is going to go up you can uh you you can reduce or increase any budget line with thoughtfulness and mindfulness that is your bailiwick and again the uh, any research that needs to be done if you if you folks um individually or as a group have a list of questions for me to research for your next meeting, please, by all means, you know, at the end of this evening, have, uh, you know, ship me out an email. and I will work on that. We have access to information that goes back to uh, FY19. So there is 
quite a bit of information to take a look at. Mostly where I see increases at this point are in, uh, in the addition of positions. And that, that's, and that is a goal of the select board and seems to be supported by the town. And that is going to make a difference in your budget. You're also probably, you know, going to have your commissions and committees not appreciate a reduction in their appropriations. Your reserve funds are pretty good. The town hall reserve is probably not enough. There is no reserve fund for the um, town garage, which seems to be a glaring oversight. Maybe this is not the year to start that reserve for that building, right? Uh, that may be something you need to- Deficit spending, keep going. Sorry about so, that, Sandra, we're listening. <laughs> so again, you know, you, you have started this process so early, so early that you, you will have time to reflect and be very mindful as to what your budget's going to be. But uh, your budget is going to go up by some percentage. It, 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 it can not, mm -hmm. given the additional positions that are being added. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it, even a couple of items we heard about earlier this meeting. Right. <clears throat> yep. So. Would you like me to talk about personnel now? Sorry, I um, couldn't figure out how to get back to you. Oh, dear. Yeah, sure. Ann Winchester. Oh. Yeah, okay. So I'm sorry I didn't um, give you these written out, but I think I can explain what I've done. I've made a list of all the paid employees in town, including those who get stipends. And Sandra and I tried to break break the uh, ones that are salaried and earning more than just stipends into an hourly rate so we could compare the levels that they're at. And what we found was that the town clerk, the town administrator, and the grants administrator all make approximately $30 an hour. When you, yeah. And the, our um, assistant, Sandra, you had $20 an hour, I think. Or no, that was the recording secretary, Never mind. Our assistant makes about approximately 24, a little bit more, $24 an hour in all her three assistant capabilities. Um, the road crew is making $25 an hour <clears throat> and probably the road foreman will make something on the order of another $2 an hour. So that's how we put it in the budget. We just put a holding place of 27 for the road foreman. Then I made a flow chart, which I can share with you tomorrow, but I can't do it tonight, in which um, I tried to figure out how all the responsibilities flow. And it kind of looks like this. We have three groups who are directly responsible. To, this is, again, assuming we hire a town administrator. We have three groups directly responsible to the voters. That would be the listers, the town clerk, and the select board. One of those, had the town clerk has an assistant. If the select board were to hire a town administrator, the town administrator would be overseeing the way we're envisioning it right now, all the paid employees. So that's the road foreman and the five staff, the treasurer and the, tre well, the treasurer's assistant and their own assistant, plus the gospel hollow warden the animal control officer, the town constable, the zoning administrator, the health officer, and the grants administrator. 
the that would leave the select board overseeing all the unpaid staffs and individuals like the planning commission and the swim committee and so so on so when you look at the that when you look at this chart it, it immediately becomes obvious that the town administrator is overseeing has, has an, a huge amount of responsibility so as we thought about that, we decided that we would tentatively put the town administrator in at about between 38 and $40 an hour. Um, so we just tentatively put in a salary of 80,000. That would be 38, 46 an hour. So that's how we started with the numbers for those positions as you look at them in the budget. And then, oh, by the way, the hourly rates I just gave you, you know, the $30 an hour and so on, that's what they're making now. That's without whatever COLA we're going to be giving them um, this year, where I was not thinking, of course, of a COLA for the town administrator. So. Uh, so in the FY24 budget, there was um, definitely a director of public works and there was um there were other positions too that were never filled how did you um did you consider like a, a pot of money i mean i know that's something we talked about back in march when we were all first elected like a roughly a pot of money that would um eventually be potentially for an administrator of some kind and um and a road commissioner or foreman or whatever what was that number that um, that number was eighty thousand dollars. It was tucked into the highway budget. We pulled it out of the highway budget and tucked it into the general government budget. Um, so that left some uh, spaciousness in the highway budget. Uh, and the thought process behind that is that that town administrator oversees uh, both the general government and highway and is uh, we at the for, at first blush it didn't seem that that budget line should be sitting in highway but should be moved to general government and you'll see that on um, page uh, seven that the um, Director of Public Works line for FY25 is not funded, and the note says it's moved to general government as town administrator. Okay. Uh, hey, Ann, in your flow charting, while you were reviewing and analyzing the kind of hourly rates for all of those, it, it sounds like you, you must have gotten kind of an estimate on like that time spent for each one of those, like an estimate from each of the individuals in those positions about like how many hours a year they're, they're putting into the work. Is that right? Uh, well, hours a week. Yeah. The town hours clerk is 30, town clerk is 32, town administrator is 40. Treasurer, I, I'm not quite sure how that's going to come out once we have a town administrator. That's still to be determined. But currently, at sixty-two thousand, the town treasurer would be making about thirty dollars an hour. If it if 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 it was sixty-two thousand and the town treasurer were working forty dollars an hour, that's what I used yeah. to figure it out. Sorry, was that including the delinquent tax collector? So that, that um, and I'm just going to hop in there on the town treasurer line, the town treasurer wages, um, we had in there $30 an hour at 32 hours a week. And then the uh, current job description has that position also picking up delinquent tax collection and that budget line is $11,000. So um that that is a 40 to 51 no pardon me $61,000 a year um position at 32 hours a week that that may be too much 
that, uh, you know, you're going to have to see what the market bears. And it seems that a town administrator at this point is going to be hired prior to the treasurer. I I'm not sure about that. That is a changing um, scenario. It's an iterative process, as they say. <laughs> yeah, it is in process and interim, interesting, uh, organic process. <laughs> okay, so um, do folks want to peruse this for a minute and have time for more questions, or is that are we feeling like that's a good introduction? Okay. Well, are we going to talk about um, what should actually be on it, line by line, tonight? That was my vision. You mean like go through the entire go through the entire budget and talk about each line no, item? No, go through the portions for select board that that is under the select board piece, um, and a couple of the others, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we have. Do we have time hopefully... to do that? Mm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, let's see. Select board, that's page one. Uh, select board assistant. Um, I think that, are we gonna have a select board assistant? If we have a town administrator with an administrator uh, assistant? I moved that over to town administrator assistant. That's how I was thinking of it. Okay, that makes sense. All right, and then the second one is grant coordinator, which is, that is something that Donna Fitch had been doing and right now nobody's doing it, is that correct? Well, Toby's doing a huge chunk of it and we're paying him 16,000. Um, right, but that's but that's in the highway budget, isn't it? Right. Is the sixteen thousand in the highway budget, Sandra? Um, yes. yes. Yes, it is. He is managing only highway grants, so there are only about five or six non-highway grants at this point in time. Donna kind of harnessed that information early on in your tenure, the, uh, maybe in April, and uh, just collected that information as best she could from uh, the year when there was no treasurer or oversight. And at this point, uh, one of, on my to-do list is to bring the grant information up to date uh, so that that uh, the the town administrator I think is is managing the non highway grants and really what is the management piece the writers of the grants are administering the grants. They are making all of the decisions. They know what their budget is. They know the town match. Um, they send over invoices. Uh, the I think the management piece here is uh, just making sure that they're hitting their deadlines so that reimbursement is coming to the town. And that, you know, honestly, that's kind of like a phone call to say, hey, how you doing? Are we making our, are we going to make our deadlines? They're, the town administrator is not taking over the grant administration of these individual grants. The administrators will remain in place as I understand it. So it's just merely oversight and then, of course, tracking expenses versus grant reimbursement and seeing how we uh, land. I mean, some grants, we make money 
and some grants we have to cover uh, the difference between the grant revenues and the expenditures. Mostly we break even and make a little bit of money. So th that is actually the oversight on the uh, non-highway grants. FEMA is a bit different and uh, as we all know, and that is, uh, Toby is working that FEMA grant uh, very carefully as are Scott and Charlotte. So that that is big and requires attention. And those folks would be answering and uh, giving updates to the town administrator. So I, I don't see the town administrator doing the actual administration or the writing of the grants merely over it merely over it, there's an oversight component so the grant administrator is not uh funded uh, per se one thing yeah, and, and tulin had a question which is who writes the who is writing the grant i thought that the town administrator in theory was absorbing toby's position yeah we're talking this is specifically non-highway oh, grants, non -highway. which are grants just, exactly, which is sort of if yeah. town halls applying okay. for a grant, the town hall yeah. folks more or less write an administrative that is, that grant, makes sense. right? That the idea might be, I don't know that Toby will stay on. That's a question for him, uh, but certainly Toby has incredible institutional knowledge and skills to transfer to the town administrator, town administrative assistant, and uh, possibly that will slide over into that town administrator position. I don't know. Uh, it you know we're drilling down into details that are not uh, finalized at this point in time. I wonder if it'd be somewhat responsible of us to try to accommodate some costs associated with that, knowing that we've got a likely pursuit of a town administrator who's going to take a, the majority of the grant writing burden off of Toby, but that there may still be ancillary grant oversight that we would want to fund for somebody in a limited capacity, whether that be for new grants or for consultation, you know, during a period of transition. So does it make sense to carry over $6,000 or something like that in funding for other higher grant oversight. Again, that that's your call. It it may very well be that between the town administrator and the administrative assistant to the town administrator in that 60 hours a week, that probably would comprise a very small number of hours. We don't have a lot of non-highway grants for that require oversight. So again, that's your call and that that's your discussion, which doesn't, you, those decisions maybe are premature tonight at, at this point, but the questions are raised. I will say that as I was thinking this through, I assumed we would be keeping Toby on and I think he is willing to stay on for a little while for another year to help with the grants and in fact do the highway grants, but that the the town administrator would pick up responsibility for the other grants. And then we would see, I mean, we're, it, this is going to evolve as we get a town administrator on board and we learn to work with 
whoever it is, and they uh, begin to understand the position. And maybe after a while that he'll, he or she will say, we do need somebody to help with the uh, non-highway grants. Great, so uh, in this- I, I just I don't see us needing that this year. Are you gonna ask a question? Oh, I was just noticing that, as she said, they left the 16000 in under the highway grants. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm conscious of the time, and um, I'm wondering if there are highlights we should talk about rather than, like, the select board stipend and every, every line item. Um, so let's see. Uh, or should we just keep plugging away line by line? Maybe just. I think it's good. It would probably go pretty quickly yeah. anyway. Uh, if we just go line by line. I mean, if nobody okay. wants to talk about the stipends, <laughs> right. we can just move right beyond it. Yeah. Okay. So stipends, that's 1500 of select board member. Is that what? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the previous select board voted for that? No, no, that was uh, a, a friendly amendment to oh, right. the budget. At town meeting. At town meeting. Okay. All right. And um, let's see. We good with that one? What does that contain? Uh, right. Treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> when do, when did is that a that sweet money <laughs> that we all did this for? <laughs> End of the year, end of the calendar year. December, after we got done collected all of our taxes. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we've got the um, recording secretary wages. Uh, Rose is conveniently here recording, and so my question, Rose, is: is about two hundred hours a year? Does that sound right to you? It, um, it's no about idea. four hours usually a week. It's, um, it's, it's usually two hours for a meeting, and then I put in for three hours for... So five put, per meeting. Five hours per meeting. Five. So, and we, we met a bunch extra, but typically, I don't know, what are there, 20 select board meetings a year? Is that, is that about right? 24? Probably closer to 24. 30. 24, so 24 times five, okay. All right, so we'll, we'll uh, noodle that a bit, but now we know it's five hours of meeting. Okay, um, credit card fees. Uh, let's see, Sandra, I seem to remember you, was this, no, is that just very straightforward? Credit yeah, card fees? that is a payment to the uh, credit card company that provides that service. They bill per month $20 a month. Uh, it also covers any chargeback fees for uh, returned checks. Okay, got it. Professional fees, you're going to research that one, as I recall, right, Sandra? Yeah. And okay. I don't know what they posted to that line item in FY23. Okay. Um, and legal fees. Uh, so this is our best guess as to a reasonable moving forward um, legal fee for a town of our size when we don't have various crises to deal with. Um, I did ask Sandra if moving forward we can we could delegate all of the or appropriate uh, allocate the Curtis Pond attorney fees to the Curtis Pond ARPA mm -hmm. pool, and um, I think we should just confirm that with well confirm it with ourselves really, and but also the CPA because the issue is that Sandra needs. Um, needs us to be clear with her about right. when when we do that and I thought I thought it kind of was already that way but we just need to um, I guess formalize it so I, um, I think that there's only uh, there's been one uh, invoice for attorney's fees associated with ARPA that was that page uh, I can't remember page and something 
and that was actually posted to the ARPA fund. This is a stencil. This is all stencil. We we pulled that um, information. So you have <coughs> your year to date as of the before I ran the board order for tonight. You were at eighteen thousand dollars so far this year. Now remember, we're still in the thick of many things. You've got your bond. You've got uh, very. You've got some litigation hanging out there that is being worked on. And now we're talking about FY twenty five. And so, you know, oh, and you've had union negotiations also. So FY25 may not, may not be, uh, it, you may see a big drop in attorney's fees. And that's something you'll have to think about. You can't anticipate it, but um, yep. I, I mean, I'm sure there will be some. <laughs> If we're talking about doing significant ordinance changes, um, those should be done in council. So I would. But would those be FY24? Because there's another six months of FY24. Well, that, that I guess we, I, I, think, I, mean, I think we, <laughs> that would be a conversation that we'd want to have, whether or not we want to make those ordinance changes uh, in work on those types of changes in FY24 or put some of them off until FY25 when they can be budgeted for accordingly. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then make sure that the budget reflects that work, I guess. Okay. So that one is appropriately a question mark. Uh, so professional audit per contract um that is just our annual audit right right that um, the select board uh, perhaps ignored the contract or never solicited a contract that or, or that fee for fy 24 was eighteen thousand dollars and selling of powers uh, that would have been a contract price and they uh, reduced it to seventeen thousand to reflect what the prior board put in the budget line. So really, theoretically, it went up by $400, and they uh, reduced it at our request. I reached out to them, and they were pretty gracious about it, and said that, okay, fine. But the rest <laughs> of the contract... It sounds like a successful, successful negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. And the single audit, that's the result of the likely, we have to budget for it because it's almost for sure going to be necessary because of our uh, loan, our FEMA related loan. Yes. We have pending uh, a bill from Hutchins for over $400,000. That would be on your next order. And if I'm not mistaken, that in and of itself pulls us over the single audit threshold of $750,000 for this year. Okay. So your single audit is going to hit FY25. It, uh, you have to close your year. You have to make a subrecipient report to the state. And within X many days, of uh, the close of the year, that single audit has to take place. So at some point in time, uh, before the end of the year in February or so, that needs to be pursued and nailed down and scheduled. It is possible that it can be done at the same time as our regular audit. Uh, Sullivan and Power suggested that, and that they could fall possibly under the single source exemption, uh, so you don't have to go through the expense of an RFP. But again, that would be uh, per FEMA, per federal regulation. So that needs to be 
explored and we we need to make sure if that's the case uh, that that maybe we really might want to fold that into that July audit because we can I mean we're well the town has always been audited in July uh, we've been ready for it at that point in time and that would meet the federal requirement uh, timeline Okay. Have to wait and see. Okay, thank you. Uh, yep. In the past, um, the town has entered into a three year contract with Sullivan and Powers for the audits. And I was just wondering if Sandra had asked them about that, if they would be interested in locking in a price for three years. <coughs> Sandra, did you hear that question? Yes, and the uh, numbers here do reflect that three-year contract. As I said, that at seventeen thousand and FY twenty two should have been eighteen. Uh, the eighteen four is the next piece of that contract, and then the third year is in the um, in the contract itself. I don't recall what that number is, but yeah, we do have a three-year contract. Uh, they, they just gave us a break on that first year. Okay, thank you. Uh, so town website, this line, I have a note that I have to ask Tegan why it went up in FY24, um, because there's not an obvious reason. Although Jamie is thinking. I'm thinking. She has her I, thinking face <laughs> on. <laughs> I, just, did we pay the assistant webmaster? Right, that that might be when we started paying a webmaster. Paying a webmaster, um, but it's not. The fees might have gone up because they changed. Is so that web town website? We've been hearing on MuniNet that Catalyst has has increased their fee by up to six thousand dollars to other website to other municipalities we haven't seen that yet but it's been a lot of chatter on uh yeah I guess. That, that all of a sudden towns are getting six thousand dollar bills from catalyst to host their website well is there is there a line item for webmaster somewhere else in the budget that, that would be a, a wage a salary thing no, that, no, not at this time. So you might want to add. Yeah, let's add that, that. To better track it. Yeah, we should we should do that webmaster line. Okay. And then that's what it is it, because it, we've had that for several years. I think we, that must be on here. Webmaster, no. It was done by the recording secretary. If you recall, Katie Lane Parnas did the uh, website. And that was part of the submission of the bills. And it is two hundred a month, which would be twenty four hundred. So that must be what that is. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so we should we'll just reorder that, and then if there's, a, I'll ask, I'll follow up with Tegan about if there's a, some some expense for the website. We should be booking in in yeah. this way. Okay, moving on, education and training. Um, this is for select board and anybody else who wants it pretty much well there's education and training is kind of peppered through the various commissions i want to take a look at the town cooler hang on the town so the town clerk section does not include education and training which is very important for the town clerk and i would say that that eight hundred dollars we post um town clerk training to that line and we have in the past it's also uh, for the it's also for the select so is it so uh Sorry, Barbara, do you want to say something? So so what about like the constable and animal control officer? Because I know Cole just has been taking a class for $500 a month. And I think the listers are looking to get more training since Jan's left. Listers have education built into their budget. Okay. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know. There are some things in play here that predate me. 
So that line item, you may need to uh, pump that up or add an educate. Um, I'm just looking for the animal control officer. Um, yeah, um, the animal control expenses could pick up the education piece or you can add a line for uh, education for the animal control officer. Okay. All right, I'll, uh, so we've got town, <laughs> town clerk, animal control, listers have their own. So, okay, that's, I'll, I'll do a little asking. What? Constable. Constable. Does constable have a line? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Constable. Do we have a constable? Yeah, it's called. Oh. Yeah, it's a, he, has a he has a stipend under police patrol. Yeah. Okay, he's the constable, and is that what the animal control officer is called? No, he's just doing both. He's just doing both. He's just doing both. Yeah. Okay. He occupies both positions, is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Okay, um, constable, is that the $500 training he's That's taking? That's the $500 or? training he's taking now. Okay, got it. All right, I'll, uh, I'll round that up. Um, or round it all up. The copier maintenance agreement, I think that's, uh, yeah, I'll come and ask you about that because Sandra, you thought maybe that that was um, already accounted for elsewhere? No, I, I'm not sure why they pumped it up to $900. It's never been that high. Um, but it, I, I just can't say why FY24 shows that as $900, the actual and FY23 was 225. So it seems like perhaps that should be adjusted. But I okay. don't think that maybe they were anticipating something. And why is that under yeah. why is that under uh, select board and not general office? It's just a historic spot for that particular line item. <laughs> that, I mean that that's that's where that's it, it has been. What can I tell you? When we were regularly printing out 14 by 11 copies of the agenda or something, like <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 it, it's just been there. Uh, you can, I'll tell you the way it can go, you can move it for town report purposes if you want. Um, we can we can visually move it, but in the chart of accounts, it it would stay there because you would lose all the history. You you'd have to be pulling two line items to figure out what happened with that particular budget line. Okay, the mileage reimbursement. I think I'm supposed to ask the question if it should be higher, and this is mileage reimbursement just for office, all office personnel and select board, if they should need it. And I believe uh, does Toby may come out of there as well. Oh, I think that should definitely be in the highway, that one, but I guess maybe if it's not that yet, I would think he has a lot of miles. Yeah. Um, okay. And the new, the new contract has something specifically, and the, I'm imagining, I imagine the personnel policy also has mild compensation. I mean, it should, it's all standard, but it seems like it would be, it should be an account that's rolled up underneath the individual categories, right. as opposed to just being one lump sum that's underneath the select board disassociated with anything else. Okay. So that mileage reimbursement is including select board members if they are driving for unpaid work related. I don't know, is it Sandra? Have select board members asked for mileage reimbursement? No. But no, but what if they're the road commissioner and they're driving a whole bunch because they're the road commissioner? I, I, if, I do not recall if during the years of my tenure that select board has asked for mileage reimbursement. It, it appears to be other paid employees who have asked for mileage reimbursement under that line. 
Okay. So I need to, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, volunteer slash committee appreciation. There is no, um, no amount for that in the current FY25. And I don't actually know what it is. Huh? Bar Barbara's so gonna. The, so in the six years I've been here, <clears throat> there was only one year, one summer, that we held a volunteer appreciation barbecue, and that was the budget for that. It was held at the garage, and we had, I don't know, 50 or 75 people there. But it's only happened one time in the six years I've been here. Okay. Uh, Tegan offered that there is a, a group who is going, and I can't recall who that group is. Gabrielle, maybe you recall her. Uh, I in. did. Fr Friends of Callus. Friends, Friends of Callus, the, the former PTA, which is now the Friends of Callus. They are going, their plan is to do volunteer appreciation uh, for each commission and committee. They're going to bring muffins and little goodies to the meetings and that uh, at, at no charge to the town that is is just a do good work for their particular organization and appreciation of um the volunteer work on behalf of the town is is that that's your understanding ann yes then right. Tegan relayed that information to us Okay, thanks. The Rural Fire Protection Program seems to be a tradition, $100 a year. Barbara, do you know what that is? I don't. Okay. Well, I got roast eyes. Yeah, I'm married to the Forest Fire Warden for supplies if needed. The Rural Fire Protection Program is yeah, it's yeah. for supplies. They, um, they install dry hydrants at various locations. Those are like ponds that you see sometimes that have that big pipe coming out. Um, and they would use that as a water source um, and some <coughs> forest fire equipment. Or something. So it's just sometimes they need matching funds yeah. in order, you know, to get something. So and a hundred is enough for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. They, they're pretty. You know, yeah. Yeah, and a hundred for miscellaneous, and that's that one. That's the select board budget. Um, Oh, gosh, let's see where we at. Can the copier and maintenance board be reappropriated for the select board dinner funds? Like, <laughs> 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 oh. Do you want to eat toner <laughs> cartridge and stuff like that? Um, I'm just about anything by the end of these meetings. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, are we, let's see. It's 8.20. And we do have some other things to do. So I'm wondering, um, should we keep charging on and just try to get through it? Um, let's see, town treasurer. We kind of talked about that one and delinquent tax collector. Um, and we talked about the audit town hall. Where, where even is that? Town Hall is on uh, page um, six at the top. And I I believe Ann was going to ask Donna Fitch to weigh in on that budget, and she would come and present. Uh, I think I forgot. I'm sorry. I'll put it back on my list. No, I did. I'm sorry I did. I talked to her, and she's working on it. Okay, and the fund appropriations, where's that? Which page is that fund appropriations? Fund appropriations are peppered all through your um, right. budget. It's, you know, for the Conservation Commission, it's for the SWIM Committee, it's for your reserve funds, and, you know, they're going to come in with the various committees and commissions as part of their budgets. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Anne, I don't think we need to go through that line by line because because the delegates are going to do their work. Um, yeah. Ish. And uh, I did the uh, taxes, dues, and assessments piece. Um, 
which is pretty straightforward. That um, Sandra, where is that? It's page four. Okay. Um, so Central Vermont Solid Waste charges a dollar per head. They use the latest health census. So we figure that's about the same, I think, Sandra. Um, county yeah. tax, they won't be figuring that out until December, but they had, uh, their building got flooded. They were in one of the downtown buildings and uh, they think it'll probably go up. So Sandra built in a 3%, I think for now. Well, My guess is it was going to be more. Percent, but we built in a thousand dollars. Three percent would have been six hundred dollars. But um, whoops, sorry. Oh, every computer I own is talking to me right now. There. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Um, thank you, Apple. Uh, they will bill us in December. I threw in a thousand dollars for a placeholder. I mean, it, it, there's nothing you could do. That is just a, a guesstimate. That's right. It could be more. That's right. CVRCP is going to be exactly the same. VLCT two, VLCP, VLCT is going up by three percent. Um, and this a CV SPAB is a lab thing that was a one time thing and. We're not. No, doing that. that's not the lab thing. That's the state police advisory board, community advisory board, and it's defunct. It's gone away. Mm. Can, can we then yeah. can we remove it from our budget when it's defunct? It sounds like that can be removed. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like. Yeah. So the line above that, that the LCT dues, is, I I jumped a line that should be up by three percent, and I'll do that calculation. Uh, is some is one of you writing? You're going to have to decide what you want to see here. There, you you have some discussion about how you want the sheet to change, and then you need to let me know how you want the sheet to change. If you're adding education lines you know, whatever. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, so what do you suggest? Like a one person per meeting or one person period? Uh, well, however you want to do it, 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 it might be burdensome to have the same per person every meeting to have to take those notes, but you, you should just give me a list at the end of your meeting as to how you want the sheet to change. So for instance, if you really want that copy or maintenance agreement in general office, you, then write it down, move it to general office. It doesn't change the amount of money. What, what it really changes is this, that when people look at what was in FY24 in the total select board, those items that you move elsewhere won't be there. So that, that those line items, like are, you're not comparing apples to oranges. And I don't know that that's really important, but you just need to be prepared to field those questions in town meeting. The, the amount of money is just gonna be moved and the budget as a whole will remain the same. There's, there's, there's no change, just the number appears in a different place. And that is pretty easy to do. Or I guess theoretically we could we could also just defund it and and then it becomes deleted and then absorb it into a different fund. Well, you can't take it. It has to be reported because it was a line item that was hit in the last two years, and that's a, that's that's Gatsby. But what you do is you just you would put zero in that cell in that section and then add that line in another section it would have zero 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 and then fy25 uh, well we'll use the copier maintenance they would be four hundred dollars so, so you're, it, you're not changing the amount of money in your budget you're just yeah. changing where that money appears as a line item so Although is there some, Sandra, is there some reason why you couldn't just move it to a different place and then put a line where it used to be saying 
this item is now over under this other section? Well, that would be in your notes, but that's not possible to do in uh, the town report. There's not enough why room. Can't you, why can't you have notes in the town report? Uh, there's not enough room. Uh, but if you although, just although we're minus the actual FY23 column, nope. so they'll be FY23 goes in. No, I mean, remember there was that extraneous column last yeah. year, the actual FY23, which I'm this saying year, it's one less column, right? This year we're not doing the actual 24. What the year to date, if, if you're looking at a landscape. Your budget is on landscape and in the town report at the moment, it is on portrait. And so there's much less room going across. You could put it on landscape. I think it will take up more pages. And if you add notes, it will take up more pages to your town report and add to the cost of your town report. That's up to you. Why can't you just put it in the cell? So it would say uh, whatever one we're moving and then you would just say in the cell one, go to this other section that that's where this has been moved uh because you it won't make a formula then you can't add it oh up. oh i see <laughs> i mean i i don't um, think I, I i don't mean to be glib but it's a four hundred dollar item just add a line in general office and put zero in that line then you've met your GASB requirements because the town report is part of your audit and you've just moved that money elsewhere. It's, I, I don't really think it's a big deal. I don't even know if anybody would catch it. Right. Somebody might, yeah. it might be a random question, but. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry, I lost track of where we were. Can I just ask one more question? So we can't change, just change the name of it either, right? So that we can't just call it something else. <laughs> dinner. Okay, that was my last attempt to call it dinner. I promise. Well, I mean, you can put your volunteer appreciation money back in, put $500 back in there and take yourselves out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or you do some budget uh, charrettes, right, on Saturday and have a, a very nice lunch brought in and catered when if you uh, work over a weekend at, during, uh, you know, a Saturday from 9 to 12 or 9 to 1, it, you can do that. Well, that's not community appreciation, is it? But that's not what you're talking about anyway, Jordan. <laughs> No, it, it, I'm just, it, it's really not about the $400. I'm just trying to get a better sense of how we can move things around if we can or if we can't. Um, but so that all, that's all very in, in, informative. We can, it's all better for a later conversation anyway. But thank you for entertaining all of it. <laughs> but you yeah. know, you could just write a note, like make a list, add <laughs> mileage reimbursement to general office expenses remove the amount of I, money in the budget cell in select board. That's that's the instruction. That's very simple to do. It's a spreadsheet. Remember, we're working on Excel. Uh, of the things on the list for today, insurance, long-term debt, taxes, dues. Tax abatement. Are we, do we want to go through those? Oh, you'll be happy. And I personally feel like we've done enough for one night. Like we are, this is early days. And um, and we I have agree. people waiting for next section. Yeah, there's, the agenda. People, there's people here. So I agree. All right. Well, just, just so you know, you, you don't have an insurance bill yet. So you couldn't have worked on that anyway. And long term debt. Uh, the only thing we're going to add in that long term debt is that East Montpelier fire truck payment that was down in uh, your warned articles last year and so your long-term debt is what it is it, it is it, it is what it is okay thank you so much sandra i really appreciate it um and i think we're ready to talk about the town officer meet and greet
All right. Well, thank you so very much. Let me know what changes you want when you meet next. Well, Daryl. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, scheduled for the first day of Callis Fall Foliage Festival, Friday, October 6th, 4 to 5.30. I've seen a warning for this. Um, I saw that Maple Corner store. And um, it'll be here. And we're supposed to discuss the format and setup and what documents, if any, to have available as handouts. Um, I, wait, I'm sorry. Are you? Um, did you okay. I feel like we're Um, okay. So I'll go first, which is Barbara, you had some uh, questions about setup, and I don't want to be sitting at a table at a meet and greet. So I think we should mix and mingle. That would be yeah. my vote for the format and um i guess that's format and setup yeah so uh based on that then what we could do is have these tables just scattered around the room we could even have chairs around them in case people want to break out into conversations mm -hmm. and sit to talk versus everybody relegated to having to stand all the time mm -hmm. does that make sense yep okay it does are we now snacks Pardon me? Snacks. That, that is up to you guys. We did not put it in the Fall Foliage Festival. It could be added to our warning, but a Fall Foliage flyer, I mean. And it could be added to the online version of the flyer. Which okay. Okay. So that, that's like going to be up to you. If you want to say like refreshments, that's your call. I like snacks. Uh, yeah, that would be. Okay. A, what do you call it? A that would be a miscellaneous, probably. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm just looking at the budget and wondering where it would oh, okay. deciding it's miscellaneous it's, if we decide that's to do next year's budget. You don't have to worry about right. it. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, so, okay. Anything more on that? Uh, what doc, Would you like any documents, any handouts available for people to take with them? Oh, uh, what do we think? Well, what did you have in mind, Barbara? Well, the only thing that I could come up with would be uh, we, we could have our most recent town report for people to take if they did if they can't find their current one or for new residents in town. Mm -hmm. We could have um, a list of open positions right now. We have four open positions on both the Historic Conservation Commission and uh, Historic Preservation Commission and the Conservation Commission. We could have those. Good ideas. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Town, town report yeah. and open positions. Mm -hmm. What about positions that need to be appointed next year? Mm. Mm. Soon to be open positions. Soon to be open positions. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we'll call them soon. <laughs> that I've done in the last six years or so, which is leading up to town meeting, is I am in check with all the committees and commissions and helping are you going to have any vacancies and so forth? So, but, but that hasn't happened yet. That right. that happens in November, according to my work schedule. That's fair. Okay. All right. Um, oh, so did you guys look at the, the draft warning that I had in your folder? Any suggestions on that? Oh, it's already it's already out at Maple Corner Store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? I thought I saw that. Uh, oh, part. that might be for the bit of the night. Okay, never mind. Right. So um, I, I actually have two suggestions to it, which is to add the word with twice. <laughs> um, do you have it in front of you or can you? Yeah. It's in the folder, town officials meet and greet, warning and invitation. Okay, so I'd like to suggest the very first sentence say, come meet with your new, because if you can say come, come meet, Right. It makes it feel like people who already know you aren't invited. So if we say come meet with, it yeah. can be for everybody, including the people who already know you. And then the very last sentence add the word with again, they want to meet with you. 
plus yeah. any other suggestions that you guys have, any changes. I like it. Am I am I getting the sense that you guys have heard this? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's okay. Good. Well, anything else you want to talk about for that night? We know the room setup, the format, the invitation, handouts. Any other handouts you can think of? Tony has a great slideshow of the room damage. Oh, hey, to show it. It'd be background. cool to have a. Yeah, that's a great idea. Is there a good one, Curtis, of the rip wrap dam? Yeah. Make sure that's in the slide. Yeah. Does it include before and after pictures, or is it just it's, the before pictures? It's mostly before it was for mm. for FEMA. Yeah. The after pictures are very boring. <laughs> right. <laughs> A road in good shape. Um, what about pictures of construction of this building from John? Yeah, that's, there's some of that on the website. Yeah, but that's kind of old. That's kind of old. It's not as depressing as. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole FEMA thing is pretty remarkable and inspirational. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, all right, select board reports, hiring of personnel and Winchester. So um, you notice we didn't interview anybody today. That's because as you know, the hiring committee put forward one person for treasurer who is out of state and requested that we do the interview at our first meeting in um, September. So, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I did mean October. So um, we'll, if that's all right with everybody, I noticed that our next meeting's on Columbus Day. Is um, is that going to be a problem for anybody? Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous Peoples oh, Day. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. That um, is a problem for me. Actually, you know what? I'm missing that meeting, so that works fine. Consider <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be here that meeting. Are you still going to be in Montana? No, I have a work commitment. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Um, so I would warn that for uh, five o'clock then, or or maybe 530. I want to think about that, but we would do that first, if that's all right with everybody. Based on some concerns raised at the last meeting, should we do that like at five at the town office? Oh, good and point, then, Jamie. And yeah. then we have the meeting here at six, and building that whole hour in gives us a little time to migrate on over here. Good, good point. Thank you, Jamie. So, if that's all right with everybody, I'll do that. Um, the, mm -hmm. As you know, um, mm -hmm. applications for the next two jobs close at the end of this month. Uh, so far, um, I don't know, a few more may have come in in the last few days, but as, as of a couple of days ago, we had three applicants for town administrator. Um, and I'm not aware of, well, I, I'm aware of one that set, who intends to apply for foreman. I don't know if he has yet. So it looks like we'll have candidates. Yeah. Um, now, it, um, we... We do need to appoint hiring committees for those two. We had appointed for treasurer, but the the um, makeup has to change. Uh, Lewis doesn't want to do it anymore. Judy, Donna, and Marianne will continue on town administrator, but they would like to add um, Cornelia uh, Carey to the committee. So I would like to move that we create a hiring committee for town administrator to consist of those people. Is it possible for members of this select board to participate in these committees as well? Um, I don't see why not as long as there's no more than two of us there. Rose, were you saying you think we already made this appointment? Yeah. Oh, 
We discussed it, but they didn't apply them. Oh, and I forgot Toby. Toby will be on that one too. I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, you know, it was just discussed. They weren't appointed. So the two new additions would be Toby and um, Cornelia. To both, to both town administrator and road foreman? No, road foreman would be different. Okay. You want me to do that one at the same time? Um, so neither Judy nor Donna wants to serve on the road foreman crew. Toby will serve, Marianne will serve, and Dana has said that he will serve. And the three of them think that that's a perfectly fine committee to to pick the road foreman. So I would like you to move them as that committee. You said Dana, Toby, and Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Who made the motion? Anne. Anne Winchester. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. So, all right. So then, do we have? Uh, so, Ann Tulin, are you interested in being? I would. Since we're tasked with hiring people, I, I definitely want to have more of an idea, get in on the ground floor so I can have more of a feel for how it works and uh, I can they proceed. Can you say your name? My name is Marianne Miller. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but before I'm Gabrielle. Um, we thought the hiring committee was doing late work for the select board. Right, so that you would not have to be engaged. So the recommendation comes to you. Um, so you would be a party to making your own recommendation. When the board gets it, you can accept recommendations, you can deny them, whatever. But what I really want to assure you is that we have used a very uniform, specific process to screen candidates. Um, just so that there would be no question about fairness, um, both to prevent the town from incurring a liability and just having the confidence of the town and the mm -hmm. board. I know I appreciate that. It's it's all new. I'm um, new to this like board, and it, I would just you know not even so much that I am participating in making an opinion. I would just like to have more knowledge about you, you want me to write write out the process of where you oh no it's not the process just it feels strange to be giving a single person and not have any idea the other people that apply what things were looked at when choosing who to move forward with and you know it's It, it just feels weird to be, it feels weird. So I just, so do you want to be on both? So it's not you, like I want to vote or, or, you know, do I just want to see how it works? Yeah, there's select board appointments. It's, it's up to the select board to decide well, and to accept your You're a, a appointed committee. So your official meetings are, Warned, Our warned meetings, meetings. Yeah. so one could attend yeah. as a uh, audience we member. Could, we could give this select board, I'm sure the recipients, um, a more detailed dispensation. So, for example, with the treasurer position, we only had four applicants. We sent out a screening questionnaire, only two applicants replied. Both applicants were interviewed, okay, and using a standard interview process where you don't deviate, you give everybody the same opportunity. And then on the second round, the interviews were more individualized to address the questions and concerns that the committee had about that specific candidate. Um, and I think what we didn't do was to give you a breakdown of this is what happened. 
we had four and then there were two. And then after the second interview, we only agreed to forward one as a recommendation. We could have come to an explanation of why we didn't forward two. But it's up to you, the committee. Um, I think that if you want to participate, you should be allowed to participate. So, um, for, so for town administrators specifically or for both? For both, if that's okay. Okay, so we should, um, sorry, Marianne. Okay. For road foreman right now, the open positions are and because we don't have guidance for you to get on treasurer. Right. Um, the foreman and the town administrator. Yep. Okay. Uh, and you want to be on the committee for both, to be on the hiring committee for both. I would like to be able to participate. I don't have to be, I would just like to be able to see the inner workings of how it works, how we come to those decisions, how, yeah. you know, does it, uh, sure. it feels surreal just to, so go and here you go, because that's, it's like a lot of, ad hoc member. I don't know the terminology, but I think it's, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I really don't have a hesitation about it at all. So if, in my, yeah, does anybody have a hesitation about it? I think it's fine. I, I do, but I'm not sure what. Um, it just it does seem odd to me that we would de delegate this to another committee and ask that to in order to save us some work and then we would participate. And I'm trying to think how to satisfy Anne's concerns. You know, I have a conversation with Donna after as we go through it. Maybe we could ask a member of the hiring committee to come to us in executive session to explain what went on. If that, I'm just thinking out loud here. Anne, would that satisfy you? And Marianne, does that make sense? It makes sense if it's in keeping with the um, Vermont statute in terms of executive session. If it's a valid reason for an executive session, no problem. Um, I mean, personnel hiring. Personnel hiring, yeah. Yeah, but it's not your just, you know. Right. I yeah. don't think anyone would look at it too closely, but I have to remember I spent you know, <laughs> 30 years working on federal programs and having to um, call up every yeah. conceivable regulation ever written. <laughs> so, Anne, if we had a 10 minute executive session with a member of the Highway Committee in order to just talk about, they could tell us more details of what went on in the interviews, which really should not be open to the public. Well, no, and I appreciate it should be open to the public, but I don't. I'm sorry, what shouldn't be open to the public? Well, no, I, I just. I would like to be able to participate in the process at least as a non-interfering participant. Like I'm not asking to have weight on decisions. I'm just well, it is our decision. I know, but if it's our decision and we have just a, we're making a decision on a person. We're making two Very decisions. Good. We're making a decision on the individuals that we're appointing to the hiring committees mm -hmm. because we're trusting them with their expertise and perspective. So there's a degree of presumed trust in those appointments. And then with that, uh, I think a tacit <laughs> acceptance of their recommendation relative to those appointments to then to consider their their recommendation but mm -hmm. you know i think the next to i think to ann winchester's point you know we we chose this route pretty explicitly to to offer some efficiency i think if we wanted to have some more transparency in the 
in the process or the vetting um, since that in, at the end, it is our decision whether or not we I accept the recommendation or do not accept the recommendation um, for any of these outputs that we could we could ask the individual committees to meet with us in executive session to provide a debriefing of sorts relative to the recommendation and the interviews that they conducted. Um, I think that's probably the most appropriate way way to do it. I I I don't know that I can fully articulate it because I don't know what it's founded on. But I guess I would I would also want to make sure that we're not since we have a, a committee that's appointed. I, I there's a certain degree of fairness that I would think that we would want to. Be, be wary of since we're talking about on every personnel and that sort of thing. So there's lots of precedent for having a select board member on an appointed committee and sure. it's very often. Mm -hmm. uh, and would be the logical one to do this hiring, um, mm -hmm. but she can't do it all by herself. So she needs some help. It would be logical for Anne to be there, in my opinion. I I I don't know you very well, and I know Marianne a little bit more, and I feel like you have such a wealth of knowledge, and I feel like you want to learn, and I feel like I, I wish I knew what happened. You know, like, how do you do this? What's the process? Maybe going forward, because you're in the infancy of your service to the town, that you want to garnish knowledge about this, and maybe sometime down the road, you might have to be appointing another hiring committee, and maybe they won't have Marianne's expertise about this fairness, this equity, what the process was. So when I hear that you offer to do this, to me, I'm like, Anne really wants to learn. And I would kind of like to learn. To learn. I'm old though, I'm beyond that. <laughs> you know, but that, that's my interpretation of your offer um, because I, I know that you have a wealth of knowledge, wealth of knowledge, as do the other people on your committee too. Yeah. Um, so I just want to throw that out. Mm -hmm. That's my take on it. Oh, no, and that you're a group of the town power players, and I'm, I'm nobody from the east side. So, you know, and I, and I don't, I'm not. It's fine. I mean, in a perfect world, I think the committee would have preferred to have multiple candidates to recommend. Um, this hiring season, it, it's not so easy. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so um, I don't quite know where that leaves us. If Anne Tulin feels she can participate, um, Ad hoc, do we appoint her? Mm, I, I, are we okay to appoint her? Her being Anne. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think we should just um, unless there's you know unless you're content to just attend it as part of a public meeting process, which I mean, but you're doing interviews in executive session, right? We do interviews, yeah, just with the committee and the candidate. Um, we meet during the day, we've met during the day here, and we've done our work in this building. Um, but we're gonna have different, we're gonna have different committees working, so it's gonna depend on what people's schedules are. Yeah. Um, and and what portion of your getting together is sort of closed interviews versus just you open meeting strategizing? Yeah, we we've, we've done some meetings that are strategizing about what are we going to what are our questions going to be because those initial screening questions are specific to the job. So for a road foreman, it might be, and I, I need Toby's help on this. Do you have a current, you know, commercial driver's license? Um, okay. 
just the things that hit what the um, most basic requirements of the job are. And in some ways, it tells us whether the applicant is a serious applicant or not, or they're going to spend, you know, 30 to 40, 30 to 60 minutes, you know, answering those questions. And then scheduling them to come in, you know, and we were scheduling both the committee and scheduling the candidates to come in for interviews. So we do have some meetings where we're going over these are the questions, right? This is what we're going to do when the sent home. This is, you know, the first round. Um, and then we've talked about the second round after we've done our first interviews. Okay, so um, I, you know, I to me it doesn't seem strange to appoint a member of the select board who is also a resident of Callis. So I mean that's the other piece of it. I don't know. I, I, it's up to you. It's your committee. Yeah. What's the difference between an appointment and somebody just attending the meetings, though? Well, just attending wouldn't be in the interviews. Do you? It sounds like there's sort of two types of meetings, and one is open to the public. Warren, um, no, sort of. No, they're the not. Public. They're not. I mean, it is warm. I mean, yeah, for meetings, but but it's not open to the public. It, it, well. No public has attended it. No public right. has informed it, and it wasn't called an executive session, so anybody could have attended. It wasn't public. So I could just show up and you have to do executive session. Right, you know, right. <laughs> of developing, you know, the yeah. interview formats and publishing them before before the name. Right. Um, in my opinion, you should appoint so that Anne has the option of going into executive session. She may not always take that option, but um, I think it needs to be there. On a practical level, do you meet frequently during work hours? We've, we've met entirely during work hours. Okay. And knowing that, Anne, do you still feel like you'd want to um, take the time out of? I've used all my vacation for select board stuff so far this year. So for the for the road foreman, if Dana is going to be on, it's going to have to be within his work schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. We also... I, so I don't know that we had to warn this because we're just trying to appoint. Actually, do we need to warn this? It, it was it warned. Was warned. Said to okay. It's a possible action to point. Yeah. Appoint hiring committees or right. town administrator. Yeah, um, all right. So, uh, so where, are, where are we at the point of deciding whether to, uh, I, I don't understand how Ann could be an an ad hoc member what we need to decide is is she a voting member is that right right and Anne, do you want to be a voting member i don't want to be that interfering because i know we all agreed to this process um so what you want is to be able to observe very yes i want to be able to like watch it unfold Okay, so so you want to just be there as an observer. Is that what I'm hearing? I didn't want to interfere with the decision making. I know you've been using the federal standards and I've seen the paperwork and <clears throat> but yeah, I, I want to see the kind of start to finish. It feels really? I don't know. I just feel like I should I should have and I don't know if everybody else is equally unaware of anything. And then it's like, oh, here we go. It just it feels very strange to me. And you all, everyone on that committee has been involved in the town for years, you know, and I am learning. So uh, I'm 
I don't oh, think uh, because uh, yeah, no. the power uh, uh, of uh, all I'm asking all I'm asking all I'm asking is how it is you want to interact. What you want to be is kind of a fly on the wall in their meetings. Is that correct? Well, I don't want to be more invasive. I can tell everyone's very uncomfortable. So I don't want to be any more invasive than... I don't think anybody's un un uncomfortable. I think that we're trying to determine, you know, how, how one, what your interest, like what your interest of engagement is. And then, I mean, I, I to be clear, I, I share uh, an interest in, in wanting to kind of better understand some of the context of the decision-making. So, you know, there, there's only really a couple of routes to do that. One, we are fully participating in those decisions, which is going to inherently add inefficiency to the whole delegation portion of it or, you know, make a specific request for them to bring that context to uh, to the full board um, prior to or along with the recommendation, which is also going to come with the downside or trade off of, uh, of, you know, some of that process having already played out. So from my perspective, I, for the, those are kind of the two two paths that I'm uh, to, that I'm seeing. I, I mean, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to to having that that additional context uh, be be brought to the board so that it's not just a recommendation of this is how many and here and here's our recommendation. Um, you know, it, it, it's unique in that we're dealing with small pools of uh, of applicants. But either way, I think a preliminary discussion along with the recommendation uh, for any of these positions would be uh, would be would kind of behoove us uh, as, mm -hmm. as a as a governing body since we're the ones you know making the final approval and hiring um, yeah. and then we would be the first ones questioned about the efficacy of that I guess um, is that about right I mean that sounds yes yeah well, Jordan, I was suggesting a third thing, which is that Anne could be authorized to go to the meetings and listen in. Like No, she wouldn't be necessarily be reporting to the select board because that's what the hiring committee does. Yeah, I just said, uh, I. Uh, all things being re equal, it seems like anybody in the community, whether it's a select board member or a community member, would have the the privilege of attending any of those meetings that are warned. And if they go into executive session, the committee has the authority to invite any of said members into executive session to participate in the conversation if they find it in their discretion. It assumes that those committee members would make, I mean, they would have autonomy uh, in their appointment to make that decision. Um, I, I was thinking more that I, I think I'm hearing that Anne just wants to hear what's going on. And so they would just invite her in as an observer. Is that uh, honestly? Yeah, I, I I thought she wanted to be on the committee. I don't want to influence or anything. I just want to understand. We start with this. I know you send out that immediate thing. The second thing: How do you decide on questions? How do you decide on you no? Know, just how we got from there to there. Okay, so that so I that I hear your sandwich is done. I'm like, correlates hey. to Ann Winchester's suggestion that we authorize Ann Tulin to attend the meetings. Is that correct, Ann Winchester? Yeah, I guess so, which as Jordan points out, she's entitled to do anyway, <laughs> unless it's an executive session, a hiring, uh, you know, a situation where they're interviewing people, in which case it can't. She would have to specifically be invited. Yeah. And would you want to be in on the interviews? I think just knowing the better understanding of the diversity of applications and like what kind of people are applying to these jobs and 
Well, that's the confidential information that um, the public is not invited to share. They're not supposed to know who's applied. Oh, no, I understand that. So that you would have to ha be either a member of the committee or invited to participate in those conversations. Mm -hmm. but, but we could, but we could ask that the committee is uh, come to a select board meeting and have those conversations in executive session with with the select board. Yeah. Yes, we could. That's, that seems like the easier. cleanest. We, yeah. We selected this person because we did not for this person because we right. Yeah. yeah. Personally, I like the, the the charging of the hiring committees to um, to not just put forth a recommendation, but like a, a debriefing of who the applicants were, um, uh, when, or you know what the questions were relative to the role and, and how how we got there to add that yeah. to add that context and. Um, and I think that would help add a lot of transparency. And I think that would probably look good to the community, give us the opportunity to have those conversations. Yeah. In, okay. in still a relatively efficient manner. Okay. So where we're at is we have approved a motion for the road foreman uh, committee. And we still need to appoint the Town Administrator Hiring Committee. And we do we need a motion that the hiring committees will report to the select board in executive session? I feel like we can just charge them with that. That's just an okay. instruction. <laughs> okay. Um, and Tulin, are you comfortable with that arrangement? I think everyone else is going to be more comfortable with it, so it'll work for me. Yeah. Okay. Right. And also that you can attend the public meetings if you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I can do that. Thank you. <sighs> Rose, the motion what? that Ann made, Ann made the motion earlier. Did you write it down as a pointing? I think she put both committees that was, in the same motion. That was my understanding. I just want to. Yeah, uh, made a motion to appoint the hiring committee, um, and that was under the town administrator, Donna Finch, Judy Robert, Marianne Miller, and Cornelia Carey. And Toby Bell. Yeah. And the town administrator? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, um, Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the road we have another road forward committee will be Marianne Miller, Toby Talbot, and Dana Bobby. Dana, Toby, and Marianne, just the three. Yeah. And is that a motion from Ian Winchester? Yes. It was it was the same motion, both committees in the same motion. Actually, I know what I did. I, you know how like when you put the possible action or whatever. So I had part of the motion, possible right. actions, more words down here. Okay. Dana, Toby, and Marianne for the road form. Yes, right. So is the timing for that, for the um, debriefing, would that be October 9th for those other two? Because they're closing. Um, uh, only if they're ready. Um, they will have had to have had a meeting to evaluate everything. So probably the one after that. We won't, we won't have all the resumes until the period of September. Okay. Um, yeah, and then it's like when can we get people together? Right. When can we get candidates? Yeah, so probably end of October. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, have we voted? Well, yeah, <laughs> we're not for seconded or voted. No, seconded. 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that was painful. <laughs> okay, um, so let's see. Uh, I think that's it for the hiring of personnel update. Um, FEMA, that is, Scott, would you mind doing that one? I just, I'm quite fried, quite honestly. It is after nine o'clock. It, it is. Definitely drop off the deficiency after nine o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Just Thanks very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You guys are doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard circumstances. Uh, FEMA's moving along fine. Um, Toby, Charlotte, and I met with Michelle by phone this a week ago. Um, we were working on the abandoned inventory, which is the basis for our claim. And we have to have that finished by October 26th, I think. Um, by finished, I mean we have to have include all the incidents for which we're going to make a claim. Um, and Toby is just being amazing. He's taking little little bits of data and melding them together. And uh, at the end of it, we're going to have a going to have a great uh, document to claim money from FEMA. Uh, it's moving along. No, nobody knows when we're going to see our first check. Yeah, what was the date? October twenty sixth. Yes, that's the due date for everything. That's when we damage inventory, which is the list of incidents that we're asking reimbursement for. We, after that, we can go on for years providing the documentation, but that's when the list has to be completed. So the pond is on or not on as of this October 26th. And I think Toby's working on putting the pond on right now. Yeah. Okay. Back. They're Great. about 60. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Um, all right, and roads. And then Jamie. Guardrails are ordered. What's ordered? Guardrails from Moscow Woods and nice. um Worcester Road up at the top. They're supposed to start on Singleton, putting in the cover this week. That's great for them today. We're still working to do the segment grant in this year, although we can't get a waiver until next year. We did have someone, Alan Mays, from the Better Roads program come out and meet to go over the segments we were looking at fixing, and that's the $30,000 match from this week. So hopefully we're still doing that. Um, sent out the Toby's um, Contracts had them sent out in envelopes with uh, stamped envelopes to return them to all the different contractors. And I haven't checked with Keegan on how many have come back, but I had spoken to all the people I had set up that, yep, that's what we were doing. So hopefully they'll be coming back in. What was the, um, the material storage thing that we had? Received in except from McBerry. Oh yeah, uh, for the oh, so, that is, so the AOT has to our B trans is cleaning out a contaminated site and they are using a parcel of their land to safely contain it um, until they stick it somewhere else. So it's. A part it's their parcel of any pallets. Is that why we got that, or is that it's a long route 14? Huh. It was basically a courtesy. You are doing this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. so I was considered <laughs> that's definitely what it seemed like. Oh, yeah. treat it well. I was like, okay, thank you. Thanks for letting us know. Hmm. Uh, okay, and I did uh, just quickly ask B Trans about because I don't know how route 14 works with signs, but with the store opening, people are asking about getting. More aggressive angel friendly signs, not to run people over that are crossing the street. Mm -hmm. All right, the jam. Um, actually, uh, FEMA contracts is that? That was part of that. Okay, thank you. Um, the bids are due tomorrow. 
As of today, we have not received any bids. Would have um, to be a hard copy. Yeah, uh, I think they can submit them electronically or hard copy. Um, we were expecting if they came in for them to come in the mail. Um, it is not super uncommon for people to submit their bids at the very last minute. Um, and I believe, just, I can't remember if the bids officially close tomorrow at noon or at three, but I think it's at three. And I think it's not uncommon for contractors to Drive it over. arrive at the bid opening with their bid. So I'm trying very hard <laughs> to remain optimistic. <laughs> um, That's incredibly annoying. Um, but I do know there was a little bit of a, a snafu on DNK's part in which one of the documents that listed bidder qualifications um, was different where it was posted on their website and what went out to bidders. And so we had at least one bidder think who was planning to bid think they might not be qualified based on this old document that got left on the website accidentally. Um, that's been fixed. All bidders, everybody who requested bid documents have gotten the same amendments to the bid all along. Um, there's one contractor I've been in touch with who still says they're bidding um, and I expect to see them tomorrow at the opening and um, there's multiple other companies who have told me informally they plan to bid so I'm I as I said I'm remaining optimistic that bids will come in um, but tomorrow at three will be a true moment of truth <laughs> what is the process for yeah. like you can just reopen the bid so yeah so if nobody bids or if no bids come in that are satisfactory then we uh us and cpa and dnk and dam safety all sort of sit down and say you know, what do we think happened? Why do we think we didn't? Is it something to do with the design? Do we need to tweak the process? Do we need to tweak the project? Um, and then we can open a, a new RFP process. Um, assuming bids come in, then what'll happen is we'll open them in the public meeting. Um, I forget exactly which details, but some of the details from each one get sort of read into the record. And then um, the lead engineer at DNK will bring them back to their office, evaluate them very thoroughly, um, and come back to us with a recommendation. And that recommendation might be, you know, one of these two, here's the pros and cons of each, or it might be this is the clear best or it might be let's try again mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Jamie yeah Jamie sounds like someone has to take minutes tomorrow then yeah I mean it is an official select board meeting no. and we do need to have a quorum and we do need minutes so uh, are we going to have a quorum for sure you'll be there I plan you... to leave here tomorrow morning and make it in time. Can you be there? Will you? You can and can. Uh, like I have. <laughs> uh, I, I can be. I have another board meeting in 4.30, which I'm trying to determine. I don't know. I, I Yeah, I, I'll be there. How's that? All right. Am I having to, to run this meeting? Um, I guess so. <laughs> if it's our meeting. I mean, yes, but I think it's pretty informal and Michael will actually run most of it. I think okay. that you'll open it and turn the reins over to Michael. Okay. Um, in that case, I can probably take minutes. Yeah. Between us, I can help with that too. Okay. 
IT. Do we have an idea of how long it's going to be? Uh, I'm, I think it totally depends how many bids we get. All right. Yeah. Um, and we can have Barbara notify us if bids come in throughout the day. Do you, do you want a one by one? I mean, yeah. Well, well once the mail comes, we'll know right. that. But I'm picturing UPS and FedEx could come at any point throughout the day. Would it help if we zoom? No, I'll probably just I could just probably won't attend the other one. It's going to be too close anyway. So okay. Um, no, I'll just be it. It doesn't because I suspect it won't be more than an hour. I think that's fine. Okay. Well, Jamie, aren't some people just likely to show up and because they want to be there for the meeting anyway and hand their bids in at the last second? Yes, I think yeah. so. Okay. And I think community members and CPA members may turn up. Oh, this is the town hall. It is at the town. I think it's at the town office. Yeah. We probably should have done it here. If it gets to be too but, many, you can move over here. Yeah. If anybody else shows up, you can send them over. For, uh, yeah. Town office is open door right. four. If we have to put a note on the door to send them over yeah. here, you can do that. Okay. You can have 16 over there. Just yeah. do it in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it on the dam. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, you know, we'll know a lot more tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the new town administrator will need office space and office equipment, possible action, uh, order a computer, I think is what this is. Yeah. Um, approved beginning the process of obtaining a laptop for the town administrator. And, and is it, um, if for some reason that person isn't hired, is there the need for another computer anyway, like a, a modern laptop? Because what, what's at the town office? Are they all desktops? So there is uh, a free desktop that Sandra uses when she's there. And when you hire a new treasurer, it will be the treasurer's desktop. They will also inherit Sandra's laptop but we but a town administrator is a brand new position that we have nothing for and so i asked Ann, does this head person need a desktop and a laptop and her response was she felt like you younger whippersnappers who know all the techniques of today's people just need a laptop i believe is what she was saying that would be i i mean i think it it begs the whole question that we began very briefly at the last meeting of where's this person primarily going to be working out of? Do they have a specific desk in office? And if they do, what building is that in? And where in that building is it? So it seems... I mean, yes, I feel like we could start this process. That person's going to need a laptop. Um, Jamie, just to be clear, what I told Barbara, actually what Gabri Gabrielle told me to tell Barbara is, yeah. is that you'll a laptop, and then if the person wants um, a, a more permanent station, we'll get them a, a docking station and a screen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Personally, if I were interested in this position, it would be a laptop, and then you could do some of the work from home as needed, and some of the work from the town office when you need to be there, and some at the garage. And, yeah. So that's that's my way of saying we'll figure out, you know, where once we figure out where to put them, we'll figure out what the actual equipment is. But we know for sure they're going to need a laptop. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this is who are we authorizing then to begin the process of obtaining a laptop? Would that be Jordan? <laughs> we, we, were hoping, we, we were hoping to have pricing tonight so that we, so it's like we would know what you're authorizing. I mean, it seems like we I should. Would, yeah, I would imagine it's probably in the neighborhood of 
fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars, uh, not to exceed two thousand dollars once you add software. Um, for yeah, and I I would probably authorize Tegan to coordinate that, or Tegan or and or Barbara to coordinate that with uh, with RV. I mean, I, I would actually say that we should. Frankly, I, in working with RV, I, I know that they they don't really care. Uh, they're, they're fairly equipment agnostic, um, and if we decide to buy a piece of equipment and hand it to them, then and they do the upfitting, um, that sometimes streamlines things a little bit. So it it seems to me that there's not likely a long wait time to get our hands on a computer and it makes me wonder if we're a meeting or two or three away from potentially hiring this position the, the last few laptops we've gotten it took us two months or longer to get it so we're working with rb tech it yeah. took a good two months at least yeah. I just wonder a little bit if the the person who ends up in the position would want to have some say in what computer they get. That's possible. Okay. I don't know. But but maybe it would make sense to to ask, and we wouldn't need a motion for this, but we could ask Barbara and Tegan to begin the process of researching what's available and the pricing and making a recommendation so that we could theoretically make a motion and approve it at the next meeting. No. That's fine. And also we should ask Sandra if there's any particular, I don't know, like uh, SPACs. I don't know if she would really be the I don't even really be worried about it. I guess if it were uh, if it were one of like the listers or somebody somebody who's going to be using like more data heavy map based right. software or you know modeling software, but like for a treasurer, it's going to be Excel and Word documents and PDF viewing Nemeric. and that sort of thing Nemeric. and Nemeric, but Nemeric's web based, right? Or is there software on the computer? I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm such a, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can, uh, it's pretty legacy. It's been around for 15 years. I don't know if it's a piece of software, though, or if it's just web based. So, like, but I'm going to be uh, rendezvousing with uh, Tegan later this week anyway. So, I, I guess the real question is whether or not uh, we want to start the process between now and November 9th. And I guess probably not, but we can come back with a more specific pros uh, proposal for October 9th. Well, especially if you say that Army Tech is fine with us. Or you know, on Amazon or whatever we choose to do, that yeah. simplifies it. Right. Yeah. So why don't you talk to Tegan on your Sure, day? that's fine. That's a good idea. Great. Okay. Collective bargaining team. I think we can remove that, right? Or do we still like that? Let's see. There, there is was a possible action of signing an agenda tonight. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, Larry Morgan was. Larry Mokun was supposed to draft up something or have it drafted and send it to me, and he didn't. But I think he told me enough about it. It sounds very simple. I think I can probably draft this at endum. So I'll try to have it for the next meeting. Actually, we can't sign it until we've negotiated the fee because it has to actually put the number in it. Right. What is it? The addendum for the road foreman. foreman. The the number has to go into the oh, addendum. Gotcha. The Sure. hourly yeah, yeah. Uh, so um i'll i don't think i was trying to save the lawyer fees because we've already blown that budget out of the water mm -hmm. and um i think i can just draft it and i'll have it ready when we when it's appropriate okay um shed v callus endless 
No executive session needed tonight. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's no change in status at, uh, status at the moment. Okay. All right. Um, so two follow-up items. Who wants to, I guess maybe I should do this first round of Sandra budget um, roundup for the week because um, it was mostly the, the stuff that... Um, Although we still have the pressing question of the dinner <laughs> copier <laughs> fund. I think to, got all the questions I answered I needed. Yeah, so I'll take a crack at that. And then who wants to follow up with Hardwick about the um, special tax zone? I'll do it. We'll do that? Okay. It's a curious thing. Yeah. All right. And uh, with that, I would take a motion to adjourn. What? Sorry, go ahead. Wait, go ahead. wait, may I say one more thing? Um, at the next meeting, we are going to start work on um, town clerk listers uh, budget. Sorry, on the budget pieces regarding town clerk listers, zoning administrator, DRB, swim committee, cemetery commission. Um, so, who's the liaison sorry, what, for those? What, so, when you I say think Jamie and I are the liaisons for like every for a lot of things, things. and yeah, we need so, to connect on that. <laughs> yeah, so that's for next week. And um, you've got oh. the list anyway. Uh, we just need to get that going. I'll be sure to send out follow-up letters to all these folks. In fact, I've already talked to John. Oh, and I would add town, town hall to that because John's going to come in and talk about the town hall on the 9th. So he'll do Lister's zoning administrator and town hall. Um, yeah, so just check in with your folks and... Let's make sure those are ready for October 9th. Okay. All right. No okay. And with that. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Nice. Okay. Aye. Thank you.